on this Sunday evening. We're 24 hours away from Halloween and pumpkins like this lit up all over the United States. But right now here at Husky Stadium it's the Oregon State Beavers coming in to take on the 15th ranked Washington Huskies on Prime Sports Northwest. Hello again everybody Don Poyer Steve Priest glad to have us have you with us here on Prime Sports normally with uh, Jimmy Jones and of course the Oregon State broadcast team. First of all let's talk about defense and you've got some wonderful players over there. I've got Reggie Tung is the best that I've seen in a long time at safety. Well, Reggie's had a, a great season so far He's a young man we call him Igloo because he's from Alaska. He's got great speed. A leader in the Pac-10 with three interceptions right now are tied for it. But he's, he's scored twice on interceptions this year. He's has three for his career. He's got the size to play Mark Bruner man-to-man -man and the speed also. Uh, Kane Rogers leads the front, a seven-man group up there that played the 3-4, where he's been the inside guy most of the year. Five sacks to lead the Beavers, very emotional today. He's going to move to the outside, play the 4-3, and he'll come all the time. So he'll be the rush man. Mm -hmm. Offensively, Don Shanklin at quarterback still has the bad wheel running that option. And, of course, J.J. Young, one of the best uh, uh, runners in the Pac-10. Well, Don has done a great job of coming back from the injuries. He's still nicked. He's still playing. You can see his statistics. He's got a lot of rush yards this year. He's capable of breaking it at any time. Um, he's got an 83 and a 72. Last week, Stanford tried to shut him down by hitting him forcing him to pitch. The Beavers got 350 yards, and a lot of them were to J.J. Young. J.J.'s a preseason all-pack 10 guy with Napoleon. This is a big game for J.J. because he's this is the guy he's compared to. He's a great, great blocker, and he's capable of going all the way, 151 yards against the Dogs last season. In your game last week, Stanford in Corvallis, Oregon State was favored for the first time against a Pac-10 opponent since the 70s. That was after you played, of course. <laughs> But, uh, but Coach Pettibone really said the kids weren't used to that, and they were awfully tight in the first half. Well, they were tight. They didn't come out and play the kind of football that, that they have early in the year. They were coming off a big win at UCLA, too, yeah. and, and people thought maybe they were a bit overtrained and, and uh, thinking that it just didn't prepare well. So they came back. They played well. They made it a game, but they put the ball on the ground again last week. Uh, USC, they gave them seven times on the on the ground last week. Four. The Beavers have got to keep the ball in their possession to win this football game. Okay, Steve, good to have you with us today. It'll be a fun afternoon. You okay, buddy? Sunny six killer after last week. I'm fine. Uh, it's over with. You know, um, <laughs> once you play ball for the Huskies and you lose big games like that, it's uh, it's it's a nice thing about it, Don. It's a half hour ride home. <laughs> yeah, it's a quick trip home. All right, let's talk about two of the players that have to chase that option offense of Oregon State's. Lamar Lyons, one of them, along with Richie Chambers on the outside. Well, it's going to be a safety and linebacker on the outside game, I think. Uh, Richie Chambers certainly is having a great year. You can see there, 12, 12 and a half tackles for loss. And Lamar Lyons, that, that's combined for those guys, I should say. And Lamar, the safety, he's going to have to watch out for those Oregon State backs, cutting back on him, getting blocks around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the secondary, they have to have eyes on the sides of their head almost to look for those that's crackbacks. Right. Offensively, let's take a look now. Of course, Damon Heward, who played injured much of that Oregon game. Napoleon Kaufman had 100 yards, a little more. But uh, I know they want to establish him today early. Well, let's, let's talk about Napoleon first. You see the first five games, 924 rush yards. The last two, 181. Everybody's stacking up against Napoleon. And as we heard today, Oregon State is going to go to the 4-3 set on defense, much like everybody else. Uh, Damon Heward. Tough loss. You look at the game overall. He had a pretty good game. He let him down that drive for the last series. Unfortunately, the big pass, everybody remembers, is the interception. But that's part of the territory. You're the quarterback. You're the hero. If you score yeah. a touchdown, and you're kind of a bum if you if you don't. But the key is how can he rebound today, and how can he you know, lead that team against the Beavers? It's gonna be, let's watch him today. All right. Now, two linebackers who used to wear the purple and gold and chased that Oregon State option a couple of ball games. Dave Hoffman and James Clifford, Hoff and Clough are with us again on the sidelines. And guys, discipline, man-to-man -man assignments today. You really got to keep focused, don't you? Yes, you do. It's assignment-type football. David Kilpatrick's going to have his hands full. You can watch him from the snap of the ball. He's got to get up field. He's either going to take away the quarterback or the pitchback. If you keep an eye on him, he's going to be where the action is. That's right. And on the inside, Ink Aliaga is really going to have to stay at home inside, not go flying out of there trying to look for the the pitch and the option to stand side looking for that dive looking for that trap making sure they don't bust the big one up the middle the main concern of the defense is to do your own job when you get caught up in trying to help out the other player that's when things go bad I guess the option stay okay guys stay in focus and staying with that discipline all right it's time to kick off Oregon State Washington Husky Stadium it's Halloween weekend what more could you ask for here on Prime Sports
Husky Stadium, partly cloudy skies, temperature in the low 50s. I'm Don Poyer with Sunny Six Killer. Steve, Steve Free says we are in Husky Stadium for Oregon State against 15th ranked the Washington Huskies. The, C, the series lead overall, Huskies with it at 47, 26, and 4. Last year, a very close game where the Huskies had to come back down 14 3 at halftime. And everybody remembers 1985, where Oregon State blocked the punt and went on to get a victory 21 20. The coaches today, second time they will have met as Jerry Pettibone comes into Husky Stadium for only the second time now in his fourth year with a record of 831 and 1 so far. But he is doing some wonderful things down in the Willamette Valley. And for the second time, he will go against Jim Lambright in his second year now at 12 and 6 overall and 1 and 0 1 and 0 against Oregon State we asked him what's his biggest memory of that 85 game when Oregon State won and he said simple that block punt I can tell you exactly on the field where it took place the toss overall was won by Washington they will defer to the second half and Oregon State will receive Shocker, I know we are on tape delay. They just announced Arizona State. I had 20 zip in Provo against BYU. A whack attack in reverse this time around. <laughs> John Wales, who has been working the last week or so with Chuck Nelson, former Husky kicker, and used to be with Prime Sports in the booth during the games, and now with KOMO Radio, trying to get him out of his funk, Sonny. He's been working with Chuck. Chuck's a good guy to go to. I know Jeff Jager's down there with the Raiders, so it's nice to have Chuck in the neighborhood. Wales ready to kick off to Oregon State. Sunshine now just breaking through right at kickoff. Appropriate for this Northwest rivalry. And goes out of bounds as Terrence Blackwell was hoping to receive that kick and take it back. Let's take a look at the people in the backfield. J.J. Young coming into the ball game. Playing very well and has already 646 yards. The fullback is J.D. Stewart along with Cam Reynolds. And Don Shanklin will run it all. The wide receivers out there. Douglas and a tight end big. Brad Barcroft at 6'3", 240. And the people up front. Fenga is the center. John Garrett now a 39 straight start. Mr. Reliable on this team and up front anyway. So it's first and 10 for Don Shanklin and the Oregon State Beavers on the 35-yard line of Oregon State. They'll take it on the left hash mark. They send the wide receiver, the one and only, to the right side with only Stewart behind him with the two wings. Now the motion giving to the fullback, Stewart, who gets good yardage up to the 41-yard line as Malloy is there, lawyer. And defensively, Steve Hoffman still nursing that back. David Ritchie playing without Mikey Willico to back him up was an infected elbow. Deke Devers again. And the linebackers who will be so busy today and trying to stay disciplined to follow this option and the people in the secondary likewise. It is second down and four for Oregon State. Breaking up the midfield and finally down to the 46 yard line is J.D. Stewart stopped by Richie Chambers and Lamar Lyons. Working for the fullback, Steve. Well, the, this is an offense, the triple option that, that is built on the fullback, getting into the crease. Don Shanklin then reads what he calls a, a key right over the uh, offensive guard, decides whether to give it to the fullback, and the fullback's really at a disadvantage. He's got to grab the ball or not, purely on field, and then get what he can. J.D. Averaging just over 40 yards a game. It's first and 10 down to the Huskies uh, 47. Deke Beavers is there to meet him. Looks like no gain. Still at the 47 of Washington. Hey, Steve, I was going to ask you, the Oregon State offense really likes to spread it out a little bit. And you look at their splits on the line of scrimmage, they're really spread out. Well, that's part of the system, Sonny. As you know, the easiest way to, to block a running game is to get people split out so you can find a crease. Oregon State really relies on it. You'll rarely see them inside of a yard and a half between linemen. Beavers with 28 tackles this year. No gain. Second down and 10 for Oregon State. Again, the fullback. This time, Incaliaga is waiting for Stewart. 
It's good to see Ink back. You know, the uh, last few games, he's back 100%, and he's really been playing extremely well as he started off against Arizona State. You see him stepping right up in the middle here. Big Stewart coming in there. Big hit, Ink. Good job. Can't let, you can't let J.D. Stewart get untracked early in this ball game because it'll just help him get, get to the corners on this option. Ink up now to second on the team in total tackles. Big reason. He's healthy. Playing more. Third down and nine. And again, it's the first man through. As Stewart carries. J.J. hasn't carried yet, has he? Well, it's, you know, the offense uh, is dictated by what the defense gives him. A lot of teams are now starting to play Oregon State by simply giving you the fullback, particularly on third long. Why not? You got to get 9, 10 yards, got to get 12 yards. Hey, give it to that fullback. Anything Deavers. but give it to J.J. Young. There he is there. Yet to carry the ball. Dick Devers on that last tackle. So back to punt is Doug Stuckey, number 19, the sophomore out of Newport Beach, California, and Leon Neal with a busy day against Oregon last week. Who we see? Spiral. And he'll let it roll, and oh, tough break. Cameron Reynolds with a good shot at it anyway. Just bounced the wrong direction, and they were unable to keep it in play. So Washington will take over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. In the backfield, Damon Heward, bad knee, bad ribs and all. Napoleon Kaufman and Richard Thomas at fullback. Eric Bjornsson along with Mark Bruner. And Dave Janoski with that wonderful catch against Oregon. Boy, what a great grab he had against the Ducks. Frank Garcia and the rest of the crew up front. First and 10 on the 20-yard line for Heward and the Huskies. They go to Kaufman right away. Gets a pick as Patrick Kessie knocks his man outside. And Kaufman cuts to the inside. Five-yard play. As... Corey Hewitt was one of the first to get there, number 45. People up front, Tom Holmes, along with Tony Hewitt, Taki Ina, Tally Ina's cousin. You remember Tally when he played for Washington State and the Seahawks. The linebackers inside, Rico Petrini, very good linebacker. Kane Rogers, as we mentioned, from Tacoma. Nathan McAdee out of Newport High in Bellevue. Second down and five for the Huskies. Kaufman again, got a lead block. Andrew Peterson, great pursuit on the part of the Oregon State Beavers, and the ball goes back to the 19-yard line. First to get there, Tony Hewitt, the junior out of Anaconda, Montana. Tony's part of the Bruce brothers here. Tony and Corey. <laughs> Corey's back after being a three-year starter, but out the last two weeks. Just a good job right there on the force. Pacquiana did a great job closing it down, and obviously Tony's the recipient of the tackle for the loss because of Packy's play. Yeah. But again, aggressive. That's what you see, see out of Oregon State. That's what they have to do to be successful. Third down and 10. They lose five. So they do actually mark it on the 20-yard line. Looking to throw. Looking already to Eric Bjornsson. Too high, and the Huskies will have to punt. Hey, Don, I don't understand that play. I know, I mean, he's been going to Eric Bjornsson quite a few times in the last few ball games, but even so, it was third and ten, and that pass would have probably only netted five or six yards. William Efford was pretty close, too, Steve, well, <laughs> to the cornerback. I would have liked to have seen that pay, play on a line. <laughs> <laughs> William's an excellent defensive back. He was a Pac-10 uh, honorable mention last year. He's a team captain, got great speed, and usually picks the ball pretty well. He's the all-time breakup leader at Oregon State. Here's Mark Williams back to receive for Oregon State. Averaging just over five and a half yards per reception as Jeff Prince is back to boot. Low driving spiral way back to the 30-yard line of Oregon State. Let's see if the outfunded is covered. Still on his feet is Williams. Good one-hand drill there to get an extra four yards and is up to the 46-yard line of Oregon State. Let's take a timeout here in Husky Stadium. No score with ten and a half minutes to go first quarter.
He was no score so far here with ten and a half minutes to go. Don Poyer, Steve Priest, Sonny Six Killer, Dave Hoffman, James Clifford. We got more people on the booth in the sidelines than on the field. <laughs> First and ten from the 47. Second series for Oregon State. Shanklin keeps. Major first down yardage into Husky territory to about the 48 yard line. Five yard gain, they call it, for Shanklin, who's again playing with that bad ankle. But you've been impressed, Steve, the way he's toughing through it. Well, he's toughing through it. And look how he steps back for that fake. This is what they call the midline. Oregon State adjusted it four or five games ago, trying to stop people from forcing Shanklin farther outside. They cut him up inside by moving the fullback in. Been very successful for the Beavs. Second and five, Stewart, short yardage. Aliaga and Hoffman in the middle, slowing them down. What that midline does is allows the Beavers to get their quarterback to read the same key quickly. As you see here now, he'll step back instead of stepping, um, just turning. Then it allows Shanklin, if he's running the option, to cut inside of his pitch read. Takes a little bit of the pressure off the pitch read, doesn't get him hit as often either. J.D. Stewart, five carries, 24 yards here in the first quarter already. Third down and four for the Beavers. Left side, Shanklin may be short as Lawyer Malloy is in a foot race with the quarterback. Again, Lawyer Malloy coming up from that free safety position, making a very key tackle. Looks like it looked like Shanklin was going to for sure make the corner and possibly yeah. go for a touchdown. I thought he had. I thought he might have had the corner. That's what I thought. This is the double option. The fullback doesn't take the fake right there. JD's just got to get the block. The Beavers may have a big play. That's a great free safety. Absolutely. And Steve, he's been doing that the whole season. You can tell by the noise. The Beavers are going for it. They they don't have a fourth and one play that isn't a go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all work, don't they? Shanklin easily. Nice surge by the offensive line. Johnny Finga at center and company. Gets three on fourth and inches. Well, that's a big center, Don. He's uh, 305 <laughs> pounds, Steve. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind following him on the right. stage. So, I mean, he hasn't seen 305 since about the fifth grade. I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> they, the Beavers have a right guard. They call Big Tex. When I asked if he'd made his 324, this this is a young man named Thompson. He said, I have, I'm actually a couple of lunches over the 324 limit. <laughs> yeah, Brad Thompson, he's 330 now. They haven't listed anyway. First and 10 from the Husky 41 yard line as Douglas is wide to the right. <laughs> and a timeout's going to have to be called. The play clock was down to zero. Reason I chuckle is when you, you say where your wide receiver uh, is located for the Beavers. Well, you go there maybe two, three times the entire game. However, they're usually big plays when you do go because everyone's thinking runs so much. Well, the, the Beavers' pass offense, unlike anything you will have seen this year, is totally to assist the running game. They just try to occasionally sneak a cornerback, or excuse me, a, a wide receiver by the cornerback, or else run a halfback on his normal blocking path, only scoots right by the linebacker or, or the safety and goes upfield. That's, That's what, you know, like, I was noticing, Steve, that Cam Reynolds, number 30, is a real key on that. He catches the ball well, he runs the ball well. I'm sure we'll see him catch a few passes this afternoon. Well, he's an excellent receiver. So is JJ. JJ's had a couple of chances that uh, have failed in the passing game so far that, that the Beavers have to capitalize on. And again, they do it to take some pressure off the offense. Randy Hart's had a busy week, the man in the middle of this huddle, the defensive line coach and assistant head coach. Trying to teach these Huskies how disciplined you have to be against Mr. Shanklin and that option offense. It's interesting that the Beavers offense averages over five yards of pop on the running side. You presume it's going to be four or five yards of the play, but it really isn't. It's typically two yards, two yards, and then 15. Shanklin mm -hmm. suffering his first interception, and that was against Stanford last week. First and 10 for Oregon State. 41-yard line of Washington here with 840 in the first quarter. Shanklin. And Reggie Reeser is able to bring him down on an open field play, but the first down by Shanklin down to the 26-yard line. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't Reggie, it was six. Yeah. Well, Don Shanklin is a guy who likes to hit. He's got good size along with his speed. You don't see too many fakes here. He'll make a couple of fakes, and then he'll go right over people. We'll watch him today. He'll actually block for the option. 
He'll pitch out and take off like an old single wing quarterback. <laughs> Shanklin, four carries, 27 yards. First and 10, normal wishbone. Reynolds, and he is down to the 22, 21 yard line where Ink Aliaga meets him. We're going to see on this replay, Don, if we have it, but that's what we talked about in the pregame, having that discipline in the middle for those little cutbacks like that. And Ink Aliaga, 54, did a great job. You don't stay home, it's a long afternoon. You've got to really watch the back side. I'm sure Steve will agree that this is one of the plays here that sets up everything on the other side. Cam Reynolds has done a lot of running this year, and that was a great job by Inky to stay with him. Second down and five, the shift by the Huskies. Stewart to the 20, possibly. Hoffman and David Ritchie, the two of the three up front people there for the stock. David coming off a terrific game against Oregon. Very difficult for the Beaver offense, the way the Huskies are shifting. They, they wait for Don Shanklin to call the direction of the play. They wait for him to get in the cadence. Then they move. So we've already seen a couple of times today where they've stopped it cold. That's what they wanted to do coming in. Give the Shanklin a lot of looks, have a lot of movement on that defensive front. Both of these teams coming off losses. Oregon State to Stanford, Washington to Oregon. Third down and three. Shanklin still has the pitch to Reynolds. I think he may have stepped out of, oh my goodness, I thought he stepped out of bounds back on the 17. That's, it appeared he did, Don. Didn't oh, look. big break for Oregon State to the 10-yard yes. line. He did mark it, he changed his mind. Okay. Take a look here, you see Don Shanklin, watch, he pitches, he's going to go block. There it is. <laughs> that would have been quite a call, he stepped Woo. three times out of bounds. <laughs> Look at Shanklin there. How many quarterbacks you see do that <laughs> in this day and age? Not too many. Since Sonny graduated, we <laughs> yeah. haven't seen that Husky Stadium. In the red zone, Oregon State has scored on 22 of 28 opportunities. On fourth down, Shanklin takes to the fullback and gets that and much more. Lawyer Malloy with a stop, but it's first and 10 for Oregon State. Of those 28 opportunities, scoring 22 times, 19 have been touchdowns and three have been field goals. That's a tremendous average down here inside the 20, Don. They've done an outstanding job, as have the Huskies. Remember, Oregon State led 14 to three at halftime against the Huskies last year. First and 10, ball on the 13. Shanklin, this time the pitch, spent a lot of room, no. Good job of coming up is David Gilpatrick on J.J. Young. Did a tremendous job fighting off the block and getting to the ball carry on the outside that time. You know, one thing, here's a good look at it. It's the triple again. You see the fake, the read, forced the pitch quickly, and there's a great job by Gilpatrick getting out there. And Malloy again, where were you expecting? Oh, that speed, too, because I thought he might have gotten to the corner. Well, Coach Lambright felt with the athletes that we have, they should be able to make those kind of plays. J.J. Young. Coming in with 640-some yards. Second down and eight. Reynolds on the right side. J.J. on the left. That's a movement. Uh, oh. And Reynolds is saying, why? I'm in the end zone. <laughs> Dead ball. Full start on the offense. Referee today, Bill Richardson. And they'll back it up five against Oregon State. You know, so far the Beavers are doing a great job. What you want to do against this wishbone style offense is have ball control yourself and not let them dictate the time. So far, 545 left in the first quarter. Coach Pettibone's game plan is working. Gary was concerned about the talent of this defense, the physical play of the Washington defense. Right now, 64 yards rushing to Washington zero. Second down and 13 after the penalty. Full motion. It's on the right side of the line. Possibly Darren Porter, the right guard. Looked like it. The Beavers are not penalized much. They're second in the conference. Right. Very disciplined. Of course, you've got to be with this offense. Boy, you make a five-yard mistake like the Beavers have just made twice. You're Ball passing start. down. On the offensive line, five yards, still second Under down. Five yards. Huskies are their greatest ally right now are the guys in stripes. You know, last week, Steve, that, those little mistakes like that cost the Huskies down in Eugene, and uh, you can't afford to do those kind of things on the road. Well, particularly with, with Oregon State's offense. Their pass offense, as I said, is designed off the run. Boy, it's tough to line up third and long, or in this case, second and 20 nearly. 
Out of Amarillo, Texas, is Don Shanklin looking at second down and 18 from the 21-yard line. Looking over the defense, deciding which side they'll go, as Steve has pointed out, and a timeout is called. That's the second timeout used here in the first half by Oregon State. Let's do the same. 5.05 remaining, first quarter, no score. Mr. Shanklin talks to the folks upstairs. I'm Don Poyer, Sonny Sixkiller, Steve Freese, Dave Hoffman, and James Clifford on the sideline. Is that all? I think that's everybody. <laughs> did, I, did I leave anybody out? <laughs> Second and 18. Keep those guys on the sideline on the sideline if I remember those two. Number three in the nation. They were number one at this point last year. Second down and 18. Stewart rambles his way short of the first down, well short, as they get down to inside the 15 where David Ritchie and Ritchie Chambers reach Stewart. They need to get down to the three-yard line to get a first down. The Beaver offense used the fullback a lot. They've averaged over 75 yards a game. It's down a bit from a year ago. They used two or three different fullbacks. You'll see it a lot. Cedric Thomas behind Stewart with 216 yards. Third down and 12. J.J. hauled down. Ink Aliaga, the first there, along with a host of Huskies, Lamar Lyons. That's twice we've seen that now. We talked about it again. I won't, the last time I'll say that, Don, but Ink Aliaga came up with a great play because of the discipline watching the cutback. That's, you're exactly right. That, that was a play that had an opportunity to be a big play, get to the end zone. He makes a super job. A rarity for Oregon State, only the fifth attempt at a field goal this year, as Beaver fans know this already. But Randy Lund is a perfect 4 of 4 with a long of 45. This will be 30 yards from the right hash mark. And Oregon State's on the board with 3.46 remaining in the first quarter. Oregon State breaking the ice, 3 zip on the 35 yard field goal. So on the second drive for Oregon State, they come up with some points and a lot of yards, 72 to Washington's zero on only three plays in the first almost 12 minutes. Excellent drive by the Oregon State Beavers. And uh, as we talked about, Steve, those two penalties really killed them. They really did. And you've pretty much seen their passing game so far, too. It's, it's one of those things that I think you'll see more passing out of the Beavers. The game goes on uh, to, to continue to, to cross up the defense by simply using that little trap. And the counter is very difficult as, as Lawyer Malloy continues to pound the fullback and pound the quarterback. The Beavers have got to go upside and hopefully get something out of the pass game. I'll tell you who impressed me was Tim Alexander, the quarterback that went down. He is going to be scary in his career for Oregon State. Boy, he's a wonderful athlete at great speed. He's got a great arm, too. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, Shanklin's only a sophomore. They got a, a dilemma next couple can, years. Can you say running back? <laughs> and you got the halfback pass. Napoleon. Couple of lead blocks with Rashawn Sheehy and is up to the 30-yard line. 20-yard return. Nathan McAtee, the Richard freshman out of Bellevue and Newport High with a tackle. The scoring drive itself, 40 yards and six and a half minutes before they get the 30-yard field goal. See if the Huskies can mount a drive of their own here, Don. They need to take a little bit of time off the clock themselves and get in a position to score either a touchdown or a field goal. Can't wait to see the time of possession for the first quarter. First and 10 for Washington on the 30. Toss sweep, plain and simple, and in comes the entire Beaver student body. 
as they bring him down for a loss of about three or four. Mark Williams the first there along with Kane Rogers, the linebacker out of Tacoma. You know, with all the people on defense keying on the pole and when they see Flo going away, everybody's just flying to the point of attack. Every team has done it, well, at least the last three ball games. You see the Beavers doing an excellent job of getting out there and shutting him down, forcing him back inside where the pursuit is. I think against the defenses that are doing that kind of thing, Don, you might want to go a little bit more straight at him. Second down and 13, the loss of three. Sending everybody, down he goes. Tom Holmes with a sack. And this is very, Steve, you can better explain it, but this is typical Oregon State where they send everybody in the kitchen sink as well. This is it. The Beavers rely on the blitz. Even in a 4-3 today, they're going to send people all day. They've got great speed. Holmes bench press is 500 pounds, and he's their fastest lineman. He gets there. The problem is it's susceptible to the big play. A quick opener, Sonny said, take it directly at the Beavers. That's where they've had a tough time. You know, the uh, the passing game, though, we had both outside receivers streaking down the field, covered completely, and tight end going down the middle. There was no quick pass. Third down and 20. They set up the screen. Nobody uh, there. Whoa. Kaufman, couple of blocks. It's still short of the first down by about a yard. Michael Hale, the strong safety, and Kaufman is still down. He's a yard short. Now that is a pass play. A quick screen hurt the Beavers this year two or three times. USC and Stanford both used it against them. Looks like they're going for it. Oh, they're punting. Oh, they're punting. Brits is coming out. You know, so far, you know, in the, the say, uh, last three ball games, ever since we've had success with that screen play, people have defended it real well. However, in that play, we were in a position to have a long gainer, right. and Oregon State came up with great defense. Great pursuit, yeah. There's Mark Williams. Fake. And they fake it. It's a scrum. They got it. <laughs> Was it Thomas underneath? Richard Thomas in the scrum. <laughs> How's that for a surge? My goodness. Can't wait to see that again. Jim Lambray, you've done it again. Nice play. Had us going. The I took it hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> oh, no, they're punting. The Beavers actually responded pretty well. I thought, hey, they've stopped this. But boy, you're right. First and 10 at the 45 of Washington. Thomas, first down. Down to the Beaver, 41-yard line, and I think there's been a fire lit under the Huskies. Reggie Tong and Michael Hale in on the tackle, the two safeties. Those plays worked last week as well, Don, and you'll see right here, Richard Thomas, the quick hitters. When people are flowing to Napoleon Kaufman, these are the plays you have to have. 14 yards on the play for Richard Thomas. Two carries for 20 for the day so far for Thomas. First and 10 from the 41 of Oregon State. Here comes Napoleon. Andrew Peterson with the lead block pops it open inside the 30 and out of bounds. Wow, Michael Hale, one of the first there. Kaufman popping the clutch to get outside. Here's a good look. It's kind of like a counter trade. You got Trevor Highfield, big Andrew Peterson leading the way. What a move right there, Steve. <laughs> I tell you what, that's some speed, isn't it? It's great. I, you'd like to just watch the guy like from an end zone camera. Yeah. Wow. Rico Petrini, who is an outstanding linebacker, is the man who tackled the air that time <laughs> as Napoleon went by. And down he goes. There's the payback. Kane Rogers, thank you very much. Kane Rogers is, a, as we said at the opening, a, a quarterback out of Tacoma. Came down to, put, to run the option, not knock people back. And he really had some big plays. <laughs> He's beefed up quite a bit. <laughs> he has. <laughs> He's got to be motivated. He's his cousin's Kurt Marsh, who of course was a Husky and a Oakland Raider, LA Raider. Napoleon, five carries, eight yards technically because of the losses. Forty total yards for the Huskies today. Second down and thirteen. Hoffman again, lead block. Thomas tries to pop outside. Highfield got him a nice block, and he gets down to the twenty-one yard line. Trevor Highfield kicked his man outside so that the Napoleon could go inside. Corey Hewitt in on the tackle. 
along with Rico Petrini. Corey's first week back after three weeks of an injured knee. End of the first quarter, and it finishes with some fireworks both directions. We'll be back with a second quarter after this. Don Poyer, Sonny Six Killer, Steve Priest upstairs, and let's go downstairs to Dave Hoffman and James Clifford, guys. All right, guys. This offensive drive is not only good for the offense, it's good for the defense. The Washington defense was on the field about the whole first half, first quarter out there, Dave. Yeah, they were, and the thing, and the thing that they're doing is Oregon State is, has some really wide splits. What they're doing is spreading the Huskies out down here, and they're just busting them up the middle with traps and cutbacks. And I'm telling you what, those guys got to stay at home, and, and I'll tell you what, it, it could be a long day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Time of possession, nine and a half minutes to Oregon State. Washington with five and a half minutes. Third and four for the dog. And Ernie Conwell, at least, was moving on the right side for Washington. We'll see uh, who gets tagged with it. Ernie playing with the flu last week. And uh, several guys had the flu for the Huskies. Dead ball. Full start on the offense. Still third down after a five-yard penalty. Big penalty there for the Oregon State Beavers. Well, both teams, when they've gotten into crunch territory, penalties have affected uh, both offenses. There's a nice graphic. First four games, 178 penalty yards. The last three, 253. Wow, what a huge number for three games. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. unbelievable. As opposed to Oregon State, 37 yards averaging in penalties per game. Second in the conference, as you said, Steve. Looking to pass all the way at Yardson. Great defense by Ephraim. William Ephraim, one of the best on this team. You know, you, you really marvel at Oregon State's man-to-man -man coverage when you consider that they do not play much coverage all week in practice. Wow. <laughs> well, with the ability of Michael Ephraim, I, I suppose you don't have to too much, but uh, coming into the ballgame, he's had eight pass breakups for the season, and I can see why. He was right with Eric. 43-yard attempt now by Wales. That's well within his range of a career long of 47. Good. It's a game of kickers today. 43-yarder for the sophomore out of Kent. That was a long leg. That was 50-55. Especially with the swirling winds down on the field today. Here you go again. Yeah, we both noticed that, all three of us. Even me, a defensive tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Look how high up on the bar that Whoa. kick is. Right inside. It's the flag coming through. Great distance. So we're tied up at three. Fun to look at the yardage down on the scoreboard. Oregon State, you'll get used to seeing that zero on the passing, but 72 yards in the first quarter rushing the ball. Well, the Beavers have had uh, the last two seasons against the Dogs, 268 and 280 rushing the football. Last year, they had a great first half, and then the Dogs changed their system, shut them down pretty well by... Uh, forcing the quarterback to run the football. J.J. with runs of 48 and 34 yards for Jerry Pettibone in that game. But he had some 124 yards in the first half and then the adjustments in the second half by this man, Jim Lambright. Scoring drive, 44 yards. Let's see if Mr. Wales can get the kickoff within the... Uh, sidelines here. I'm sure <laughs> Coach Lambright doesn't uh, like him kicking him out of bounds and, give him, and giving Oregon State the ball on the 35-yard line. Well, the Beavers have not had a, a long return yardage either, so, so you're right. It's a, it's a break to get it up there. And Terrence Blackwell. Wales with another 43-yard field goal tucked in his pocket. Number two in the back 10 and field goals. Little pooch, pooch kick. Fair catch wisely called on the 30. By number 40, Anthony Murray, a backup linebacker, and headsy play by the young man for Corvallis. <laughs> Not bad. Linebacker with a fair catch. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like an oxymoron, isn't it? Fair catch and linebacker? I know. <laughs> Anthony Murray out of the state of California. <laughs> Look at that. 
<laughs> One return, Did zero he score yards. a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> Oregon State has a lineman with a touchdown this year that's in their statistics. Offensive guard fell on a ball. And <laughs> so did the uh, Huskies, too. Bob Sapp down in Miami fell on one. First and ten from the 30-yard line. J.J. Young brings it up to the 36, 37-yard line. Richie Chambers and David Kilpatrick there. One thing when you're watching this Oregon State offense, you're going to see their linemen, they fire out low, they're very aggressive, but they also do one thing, Don, they get downfield. So if you're a safety and stand around looking at the play, you might just end up on your backside. Second and four, quick snap. The pitch, uh-oh, flag goes down as J.J. tries to come up with it. Incaliaga there back on the 12. Well, let's see what the flag is about. Right on the line of scrimmage, might be a hole. Let's see. Beavers have put the ball on the ground a lot. See Jerry Pettibone. That's, Jerry says, I was raised on the option. And being an assistant at Oklahoma, I'm sure he believes in it very deeply. The penalty was on Oregon State. Illegal shift. On the offense, penalties declined. Third down. They asked Jerry a couple weeks ago to put some balance into his system, and he, he said he would try to run it as much to the right as to the left. <laughs> as you see, it fits just a little bit behind J.J. there. Nice uh, AstroTurf bounce, too. So now it is third and 20. And we might have had some movement in the backfield. Looked like Stewart, if he were rather Thomas, Seth Thomas, the fullback in there, might have wiggled a little too soon. You know, the Beavers have had three penalties already in that offensive line happening. Dead ball. Of a play. You wonder. Full start on the offense. No play. That's usually not a place where they have a problem. Well, our defensive front, though, is bouncing around. They're moving right and left. They're shifting all over. And, after, you know, this, it does get really noisy on the field down here in Husky Stadium. So you're going to have to really pay attention and listen to your quarterback. That was smart, though, on the, the earlier play. It may be a quick cadence is what it's going to take. Quick snap. Literally up, boom, go. Well, this isn't meant for the option type uh, offense, though, being third and 25. No, not here. And the conversion. 0 for 4 so far. Third and a long 25. J.J., down he goes. David Ritchie on top of him and face to face. Um, Steve Hoffman leading the charge on J.J., the number five, rushing back in the Pac-10 as we speak. Well, it's just the counter right here. They fake to the fullback, get back to the halfback, and that's their version of how to cross up a defense because of their passing game. J.J., five carries, a minus eight yards. So J.J. and Napoleon are on a long day so far. Stuckey having to punt out of the end zone. Very close. Very. Oh, hit us. That hit a Husky. How did he get that back? I think Terry Holloman came up with wow. it, number six. What a lucky bounce. Now, talk about Astros' uh -huh. bounce. <laughs> Very fortunate on that play. Wow. Watch, watch this kick if we get to see it again. The, the Beavers just did not pick up the outside blocker. Take a look. Three people here uh, just have to peel off and block, and he just about gets it. Very close. That was, was that Holloman? Yeah. No. Right there. You see it hit him right there on the shoulder pad. Now watch this bounce. Oh, right in the bread basket. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Trying to identify the man who almost blocked it. I think it might have been Lawyer Malloy. We shall see. Richard Thomas on first down gets almost nine inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. As they say, keep running it till they stop it. And then this is a good play for Richard Thomas. He's very compact, as we all know, if we've watched any of these broadcasts. 5'9", 222 pounds, 220 pounds. But what it does, Don, is it keeps those linebackers yeah. honest. They can't fly to flow like they like to and get Napoleon around the corner. Three carries, 28 yards already for Richard. He only had 147 coming into the game. Richard again trying to get the first, and it'll be close. Depending on the mark, he needed to get to the 26-yard line. I guess they do have it. And that was an unbalanced line. Do they run that much? Yeah, they do. Tony Hewitt and Tom Holmes in there for Oregon State. 
Richard having a career day. Averaging just under four yards per carry. First and ten from the 26 yard line. Toss sweep, flag goes down. And Kaufman again attracting tacklers like Bacon to Bees. <laughs> bacon to Bees. Yeah, if you ever go camping, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> now, that was a very strange play. That was a different look for the uh, UW offensive line, as Steve had mentioned uh, just previously. But there's the call. What they did is they brought Andrew Peterson to the strong side with the tight end, Mark Bruner, as a, as a uh, slot back, excuse me, as an H back. I know that Jim Lambright and Steve Morton, the offensive line coach, were concerned because uh, you almost have to break your trends. That, that and Steve, you know this better, that Oregon State kind of goes on the numbers, the percentage Absolutely. from that formation, which means penalties against the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is refused. Second down. So it'll be second down. So what it means is now Steve Morton and the offensive team is saying, we know Oregon State sees us in a formation. They know there's a percentage that we're going to we're going to run a certain play in that formation. So now we got to break those trends. Well, you're talking tendencies here, and uh, that's right. one thing that they're addressing this week is try to look at themselves and look at the tendencies that they have on the offense. Second and eleven. Blitz picked up pretty well, going deep and pushed out of bounds is Eric Bjornsson by Mark Williams. Had him all the way out of bounds. Some pretty good contact there with Mark, number 31. He's starting today for the injured Buster, Ella, Buster Elihi, rather. Take a look at this. Pump fake, and looks like uh, Williams does a decent job, but we don't see the actual contact. He was doing a pretty good job of riding him down. Uh, through, well, both of them were out of bounds, so. <laughs> yeah. Pass interference. On the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Does pass interference count when you're both out of bounds? Oh, that's what I was wondering, and I'm sure that's what the, yeah. the Beavers were over there arguing was that he was out of bounds, but it looked like he threw the flag back at the initial hit. Well, I'll tell you, the, the referees might be a little sensitive today because Jim Lambright put together a, a long tape of plays from last week's game with Oregon <laughs> and sent it to the Pac-10 offices saying, see, these are not <laughs> correct calls, and from his standpoint anyway. First and 10, ball down on the 11-yard line. Richard Thomas gets near the 10, maybe inside, where he is met by Mark Williams. Give him one yard. They can get a first if they get down to the one-yard line. They listen to you, Sonny. They've done nothing but the fullback since you suggested it. Well, you know the old saying, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. You know, do it until it's uh, taken care until of. And they haven't it. done it yet. Well, we had a first and eight a week ago. Let's see how we do a second and nine. <laughs> uh oh, I thought you said it was over. <laughs> Kaufman. Oh, look at this. Got the two. And I'll tell you, Mark Williams did a nifty job of getting in there between Kessie. Who was it? Kessie and uh, Andrew Peterson. I, I thought the Huskies had a play right there. That's what I thought. Had a great out. defensive play. Take a look at this. The Beaver just again aggressive. It's the lead, I believe. Got blockers out there. Kane Rogers kind of splits it up, and then William just makes a great play. Here's a good look. We got well oh, right there. That was a good job by Kane Rogers. You're absolutely right. Mark Bruner could not get a block on him. My mistake too is Mark Bruner coming out rather than Andrew Peterson. They do look a lot alike. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big tight end. Third and nine. Speaking of. Bruner trying to get down. They say that the ball was dead and just short of the first down. Reggie Tongue, the free safety coming up on Big Mark. So it'll be fourth down and less than a yard. What do you do here? Well, you don't do a fake punt. I know that. <laughs> Good job in the flat here to Mark Bruner. I tell you what, he's been our go-to guy in third downs this season. He's doing. He tries to extend the ball out, which he's so good at. But again, he just came up a yard short. Corey Hewitt also in there to stop him short of the first down. Reggie Tung moved up well to make that stop. Wholesale substitution. A lot of big people coming in for the Beavers. And the ball's on the two. And according to what we see, they need to get to the one and a half. Richard Thomas. 
Does he have a touchdown or <laughs> just the first down? I don't know. The official thinks he scored. <laughs> what happened? Did you see this pitch? <laughs> Ball pops out and the official catches it and takes off with it. First and goal. <laughs> Watch the end of this play here. That's a great job to get the first down. Good power up front, Andrew. Watch the ball pounce out here. The official goes, nope, no, watch this. He goes, no, it's mine. <laughs> so first and goal inside the one. 9.07 to go here in the second quarter. We're tied at three. Thomas and Kaufman. Thomas. Ooh. And he hit a big old beaver dam right there on the goal line. Well put. No sign at all of a touchdown. It's second down. I know, I know one thing you won't see. Two wide receivers left and a toss over there. Okay, that's the last thing I'll okay, say about the it. game, too. Right there. 53 right there. Tom Holmes playing in the middle. As I mentioned, he's the strongest guy on the Beavers football team, and he's He's built very low to ground. He's about six feet or less, 280 pounds. Same formation with Thomas and Kaufman as Pettibone watches on. Touchdown. Touchdown. As Heward gets sick. David with the touchdown. Patrick Kessie, one of the guards up there leading the charge. Sore knees, sore ribs. Hewitt throws his body in there anyway and gets six. John Wales to kick. Wales for the extra point. And it is good. So Washington is out to a 10 to 3 lead here in the second quarter with 8 19 remaining. Timeout here at Husky Stadium will return right after this. I don't want to be in that pile. <laughs> Homecoming Saturday, 8-19 remaining in the second quarter. Down to James and David. Yeah, it was a pretty nice drive they put together right there. But I'll tell you what, we're standing over here on the sideline of Oregon State. And the look in their faces is Cliff is something. These guys have confidence. You know, in the past they get behind and they come off the field and they say, hey, we're going to lose again. Yeah. But this is a different Oregon State team, Cliff. Uh, they seem to think they can still play with the Huskies. If it wasn't for that turnover, I mean, that penalty on the pass interference, they feel they can play with them. The defense think they can hold Napoleon Kaufman to about 10 yards that he has already. They're fired up. Back to you. Eight rushes on that last drive. Napoleon touching it three times. Richard Thomas really carrying the load. From the three. Oh, down he goes. Jazar Hawkins. And that's a tough break, period. And his knee touches. So they'll have to start deep in their own territory at about the seven yard line. That's football. Yeah, it is. Cal Berkeley, I see, going now back to a natural turf. More and more stadiums. Oregon State will with First a couple of years. Really? Mm -hmm. Prescription mm -hmm. grass? Prescription grass. grass. Yeah. You played here, Steve. Did you not when it was grass? Yes. Good. We, we, lost, fire then. <laughs> we lost the game that kept us out of the Rose Bowl here. Yeah. On first and ten. Shankland, the quick pitch. Oh, almost lost it. Trying to get around the corner and nothing doing. Are they saying fumble? No. Okay, it was Cameron Reynolds and Lawyer Malloy coming up with a hit. A lot of extra movement there. I thought maybe the ball was loose. I thought on the toss that it almost slipped out of his hand. Sure did. And, and Oregon State, as we said before, has just put the ball on the floor too many times. Take a look here. It's the triple. Reads it well. The pitch is good. Cam Reynolds is one of the best set of hands on this team. Jerry Jensen doing a nice job as you see lawyer Malloy who did Jim Lambert I thought could have a field day today maybe a career day in tackles because the safety is so important defending the option. But Jensen did a nice job of forcing the pitch. Here's a pass. 
First pass of the day, better hurry. Bonnie Shanklin did a nice job Boy, of he getting sure rid did. of that. He sure did. Applying the heat, and we shall see. A couple of Huskies. Well, this is Oregon State's pass offense. They keep the quarterback very close to the line of scrimmage, and only Shanklin's athletic ability keeps him away from the sack there. Lamar Lyons, the man who is turning up the temperature in a hurry on Shanklin. The footwork's a little unique on their pass plays. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get a chance. <laughs> Third down and 13. And Thomas, the fullback, gets up to the 11-yard line, met by Richie Chambers. And Lamar Lyons in there as well. But Edric Thomas out of Pasadena. Another player who came to Oregon State as a quarterback. Started a couple of games as a true freshman as a quarterback in this system, then became a fullback. I tell you, the Beavers don't want to get caught in a punting game. They are not a very good punting team. Field position will kill them if they get reduced to this kind of a game. Stucky again out of his own end zone. Neal awaiting. Fumble. Oregon State ball. And a turnover on the Huskies. Well, like I said, they want to get in a punting game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. They sent the house on this one to try and block the punt. And Leon Neal was lucky enough right here to look like he might go somewhere. Yeah. And Larry Bumpus, a backup cornerback. You got to go with the ball, though. <laughs> He's the one that came up with the ball. Big break right there. First and 10, just outside the 40 yard line. They call it the 41. J.J. Young, just short of the first down, up to the 49 yard line. Richie Chambers with a tackle. Richie Just Chambers have a little quick trap. Quarterback spins around. I don't know whether you remember that play J.J. Young made a year ago. 43-yard touchdown. Probably as good a run as I've ever seen. He's had good days against the Huskies. Three TDs last year. Second down and just one. J.J. again. Looks like he's got the first. J.J. As he is just in, excuse me, just in the Beaver territory, the Husky territory. JJ's already graduated in his fifth year and is in graduate school. Great week last week versus Stanford. Mm -hmm. Does he want to play pro ball? I'm sure he does. Doesn't everybody? Yeah, I suppose <laughs> that kind of money you can't uh, yep. afford not to try. But he was very proud of his diploma in four years. Trailing by seven. 5.43 to go here in the second quarter. Oregon State with the ball, first and ten. And again, the first man as Thomas carries, met by Devers along with Aliaga. Three yard gain. Oregon State's offensive folks really believe Washington's got as talented a defense as they'll see all year. They've seen, can't believe the talent level and two or three people who have moved to different positions to increase speed. Linebackers to linemen, yeah. et cetera. David Kilpatrick coming up from the safety to be a lineman or a linebacker. Second and seven. Thomas short of the first, but down to the 40 yard line. So it'll be third down and a long one yard. Cedric had his best game against UCLA two weeks ago as the Beavers won. Cedric had a big day over 60 yards in Pasadena, his hometown. Yeah, that had to be a special day for him and JJ playing in Pasadena, Boy. too. Both going home. Third down and one. Thomas should have it. As the ground game keeps the Husky crowd quiet. Well, it's almost two thirds of the way through the second quarter, so it should be about time for a pass. <laughs> oh. Interestingly enough, Oregon State's two wins this year are the two games they have not completed a pass. Right. They're 0 for 4. 0 for 4 against UCLA. And the same in Wyoming. 0 for 4. <laughs> First and 10 on the Husky 38-yard line. 
unbalanced to the right side. And Thomas moves too soon. Steve, tell us about the mechanics with the calls made by the offense as they go up to the line. Quarterback comes to the line of scrimmage. What he he's given a play which may be a double or a triple Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. See you right there, the fullback moving. Goes to the line of scrimmage, calls a direction based on the numbers of people on the right or the left of the formation. From there, the center makes a call to, dis to discuss the blocking for the other lineman. From that, there's a call to the back. And the onside halfback then decides whether he's going to flare and block from the outside or cut the linebacker coming from the inside. A lot of decisions to be made mm -hmm. by a lot of people. First and 15. Shanklin with a quick pitch on the ground again. And J.J. Young's able to get it. Lamar Lyons giving chase. Shanklin meeting a Husky early. Don makes the right decision here. He's just got to be prepared to pitch. That, he had plenty of time to pitch there. It just uh, did a lousy job of getting the ball out there. Beavers are lucky. Well, you know, if you watch this, just before he pitches, he tries to go in reverse. You know, a lot of times the option quarterbacks will just lay his body out there and make sure that that tosses, because that's his main responsibility, mm -hmm. is getting that ball to that running back. And he's going to have to take those blows. I think you're right. I think he almost need to go through them to make the appropriate pitch. Jerry Jensen doing a nice job of forcing the pitch for Washington. Still alive. Down he goes. Donovan Four Smith. different Huskies on him as Donovan gets him on second and 24. Smith along with Steve Hoffman. Well, the difficulty with the, this style offense is if it's negative yardage that you achieve, then you have a heck of a time getting out of that hole. Wow, there was a hit. There was a big <laughs> play block. <laughs> Ouch. Shanklin just proved right there, though, with all these Oregon State runners, you know, you just can't get a hand on him. You've got to really wrap him mm -hmm. up and put him down because they're yeah. all experienced running backs. Third down and 28 for Oregon State. Deep Beavers. Too soon. Couldn't pitch. That's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> wow. Beavers was totally unblocked. I have a question for you, Steve. Now you're looking at the third and 28. And here's a play here. Great job by Deke. Nobody to block him. But what I was going to say is that third and all that yardage being an option team, did they do the quick kick? Um, we haven't seen it this year. We have not seen it this year. Typically, the teams have forced them into handing off the ball to the fullback in that situation. The O'Neal with the fumble last time he carried the ball. One man. And he's up to the 38-yard line. Let's take a timeout here in the second quarter. Minute 34 to go here in the second quarter. And it's still 10 to 3. Washington on top. Wide receiver to each side. Heward setting up the screen. Going the other way now with Kaufman. Great job to get out of bounds. Gets the first down to midfield. That was just a great adjustment by Heward getting the ball to him. Yeah, that was screen pass to the right all the way, and he went back to the left to get open. That's chemistry between him and Napoleon. You can see here, Steve, look at him. They're setting up. Oregon State's defending it just tremendously. Great job by Napoleon to go where nobody is, and uh, great job by Damon to get him the ball. Nice move there. Wow. <laughs> John Fairbank, a backup inside linebacker, with a lesson on that one. Woof. First and ten. Kaufman. Very little, maybe one yard. Tom Holmes, the defensive tackle, one of the first there. Big number 5'3", at 6'1", 271 pounds. He's always around that football. He sure is. What would it be like to 
bench press 500 pounds. Oh, how about half of 500 pounds? It's the one side of the weight. Well, he's got the Huskies beat. The uh, strongest on the Husky team, as I understand, was Ernie Conwell at 470 for the bench press. Scott Linehan, receivers coach for the Washington Huskies with Fred Coleman, his young Richard freshman there on the right side of the screen. One play the Huskies have to watch out for in these passing situations is they, they're the kind of team that will send a quarterback, the cornerback, on blitzes. Although yeah. uh, Buster's, Buster's not playing today, but uh, his backup, I'm sure, is capable of doing those types of Absolutely. plays. Absolutely. Buster has four sacks for the season and several tackles for loss. He's a starting corner that becomes the nickel. But today, Brian Warner's playing that position. Yeah, the Beavers do like to send it, but it's a little bit different scheme with a 4-3 today. Right. Obviously, the Huskies calling a timeout here as Jerry Pettibone trying to fight a fire up his defense. Jerry is one of the most positive-minded people I've ever been around in all my years of sports. He, he finds good and finds positive in almost every situation. That he, is, his defense also held Arizona to a season-low 126 yards. Mm -hmm. That's impressive, and it was down there in Tucson. Game was a lot closer than the score. Yeah. Second down and nine. A lot of room for Hewitt. Has the first down. And down he goes at the 33 yard line. Stopped by Brian Warner and Reggie Tung, the corner and safety, respectively. Great job by Damon. You know, we talked about it. You can see the tape bad ankle, bad right knee banged up last week versus Oregon does a great job here they give him that you know most defenses do not watch the quarterback on these type of plays and it's a tremendous job by him that's a backbreaker too you, you know you think of the great teams in all levels and you the Tarkentons and Staubachs and guys who just break a defense's back by covering people key situation and whap first down you're feeling good about yourself when you've got Napoleon under control and all of a sudden you're Timeout has been called by Washington with a minute four to go here in the second quarter. Well, Oregon State's got seven quarterbacks that have had 100-yard games. Quick, tell me all of them, six killers. <laughs> uh, Steve Priest. <laughs> yeah, he did it in 67. Uh, it's fun to look at things like this. Don Shanklin, Mark Olford, Tim Alexander already in his freshman year. Raheem Muhammad and Paul Brothers in 64, Steve in 67, and then guy that you might remember Terry Baker <laughs> in 62 the Heisman Trophy winner I could still see Terry playing oh he was oof, something very special he's still in great shape lives in Portland an attorney Huskies with first down looking to Bruner oh no out of bounds evidently didn't get a foot in Tough cover. The Beavers playing him with Kane Rogers, a linebacker. It's a heck of a tight end. Uh, Kane does a pretty good job for a linebacker right there, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Good, oh, good call. Just yes, it was. That was a very good call. His right foot had just gone airborne as he caught the ball. So, second down and 10 from the 33 yard line. Janowski wide to the right, and you see Bjornson on the top. No flag. Going deep, Yardson. Touchdown. Touchdown, Washington. <laughs> 33 yards. The 11th touchdown pass of Heward. And for Bjardson, his sixth TD reception. The danger of the blitz in this four down area. That post corner is tough to cover. The Beavers have seen it many times this year. I'll bet it's uh, close to half of the touchdown passes against them. Wales has been a busy guy today. Comes on for the extra point and gets it very nicely. So Washington uses the clock and gets up field quickly with 51 seconds remaining in the first half, leading at 17-3. Two good things on this. Watch Damon Hewitt right there. He looked to the right, right there. Eric Bjornsson just absolutely turned Mark Williams around over there, number 31. Sold that route really well. 
I think that little pump right there sold him a little bit too. Looking and, for the, know, the out pattern as opposed to no to the in pattern as oh, opposed yes, to okay. the out. And that little movement like that. Remember Kenny Stabler used to always kind of do that little mm -hmm. hitch with the ball. I think that throws the cornerback. Sonny, you'd appreciate Oregon State's corners, even though they're playing man-to-man, -man, inside out type of technique, they still line up at nine or ten yards. Boy, that's a tough cover. I mean, it's, they, they do it, they teach it, but you're really susceptible to driving hard on that ball when he goes post. Makes it tough. There's the drive. And resulting in the 11th touchdown pass of the year for number seven. Big momentum change right there. That's a big touchdown for the dog. You know, you're right, Steve, because a lot of the post routes that you're going to see are broken off somewhere between the 8 and 12-yard mark. And if you're playing nine yards off, you're absolutely right. You're really susceptible. And the kick, a low one, finally to Blackwell, who gets up to the 32-yard line. A couple of tough bounces on that. <laughs> the kicking game is a whole new adventure with the Huskies <laughs> under Lambright, isn't it? You never know what to expect, as John Wales that time went with a high bouncer. We've got a pooch kick already. Terrence Blackwell, who returned that, is a true freshman, Louisiana State, 102 200 sprint champion, first Louisiana player ever on scholarship at Oregon This State. is amazing. A number three in the nation, averaging 313 yards per game. First and 10 on the 32. Previous 13 rushes by Oregon State has netted them a minus five yards. So it's, uh, so far, it's been the Huskies' favor in terms of defense against the Oregon State option as Jerry Jensen is there, number 40. You think of the first quarter, the Beavers had 70 some odd yards, they were 75. Now they're back to 70. The mistakes have, put, have cost the Beavers. They pitched the ball bad three times now. Very difficult to run this option with negative yards. Second down and seven. Clock down to 16 seconds. Here in the second quarter. Looking to throw. First one actually passed. Oh my! Reggie Racer, who has three picks this year, could have matched his jersey number and taken the Pac-10 lead for interceptions that he held on to that one. He fired that ball pretty good. <laughs> He's got a strong arm. It's, you know, it's well, surprise Reggie. <laughs> Take a look at the system. It's only a two or three step drop, and he does throw the ball hard. I know it full Reggie Reeser on that, that play. That, that ball got into his shoulder pads. This thing was 900 miles per <laughs> hour. Poor old Reggie. <laughs> Let me know next time. Six seconds left. See the last play here of the first half. Thomas. And he's able to get the first down, but it's a moot point. As the first half ends with Lawyer Malloy and Richie Chambers making the tackle. First half is in the books with the Huskies leading at 17 to 3 here in Seattle. We'll have more here at halftime after this. Back at halftime, 17-3 the lead for the 15th-ranked Huskies over Oregon State. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. Don Poyer, Steve Priest, Sonny Six Killer in his Letterman's jacket. It's homecoming, folks, homecoming. so we'll let him get away. Hall of Fame jacket last time we were home, and now the Letterman's jacket. <laughs> I'm not going to give him the microphone. Good productivity out of your fullback. Some 64 yards, sir. Uh, all of it in the first quarter, I think. The Beavers had very good productivity out of the offense in the first quarter. They had a, a nice uh, field goal situation after a six and a half minute drive and then they sort of put the car in reverse the second quarter and went backwards, dropped the ball a couple of times, although it didn't result in a turnover. It does cost them field position and that's it. Two fumbles in the first half. Now as far as Washington, Richard Thomas had a great first half. I think he had what, 33 yards as I look at it. Uh, Napoleon, 17 yards. Well, I know Napoleon's having a tough half, but the thing is we do have 17 points on the board. I think more importantly, it's our defense. I think they're bouncing around out there. 
giving a different look to Shanklin, the quarterback for Oregon State, and I think that's helped us, and I think the two key penalties against Oregon State has helped us as well. Look at some of the highlights, and Oregon State was the first to get on the board with a field goal by a Randy alum, this one from 30 yards, and they really came out like gangbusters in the early going. Oh, just a result of a nice drive. Oregon State stayed within themselves, ended up with a field goal, but again, it, it, caught, it was a, because of a couple of penalties that they may have had a chance for a touchdown. Then the 43-yarder on the part of John Wales of the Washington Huskies tying it up at three apiece. Later, a sustained drive by Washington and Heward with a quarterback keeper. I like to see Damon do this once in a while. I mean, it keeps the defenses honest, and, uh, you know, he's been banged up, and it's good for him to get a touchdown. That made it 10-3 to in the second quarter, and then here again, some good pressure by the defense. Well, you see the defense. The Washington has really put pressure uh, on this option, forced a couple of bad pitches. That's the way to stop this system. As a result, Washington then good field position, and then this pass for 33 yards to Bjornsson. Well, when they're bringing a the house on defense, you leave yourself out there man-on-man -man coverage, and that time Eric Bjornsson with a great move. Sixth touchdown reception for Bjornsson, and number 11 as far as TD passes for Heward. Let's take a look at some of the statistics for the first half. And again, as we said, only 17 yards for Napoleon Kaufman. People are looking for him. They're ganging up on him. And as a result, Richard Thomas is having a good day, maybe his best ever. Numbers overall, 132 to 81. Turnovers, the one uh, fumble on the part of Leon Neal on the punt return for Washington. Time of possession still heavily in the favor of the Beavers. Well, that's what the Beavers need to do to win this football game. If they could just get out of the negative position, this might be a good one before it's over. Let's get to the reflections of those two famous linebackers, Dave Hoffman and James Clifford, on the sidelines, guys. Yeah, well, here we are down here on the sidelines again, giving our little perspective here. And, and uh, James and I were talking, and we feel just like Sonny kind of said, before that the Husky defense really is just flying around and making things happen. The first couple of series were a little sloppy. The Oregon State Beavers were moving the ball, especially up the middle. There has a big seams at the middle, but they smoothed into it and they're stopping it. And, and just like you guys stated before, they're making them do those bad pitches. Cliff? Offensively, Oregon State needs to come out and do what they did in that first quarter. Shanklin came up the line of scrimmage, took his time, and he, what he was doing, he was audible. He was looking at the defense of the Huskies, seeing the weakness, and checking to go that way with the option. Offensively for Washington, you know, they're doing fine. They have 17 points on the board, but you know what I want to do? I want to see him get Napoleon Kaufman the ball quickly, not those counters, not yeah. the slow hitting plays. We want to get him on the quick hitting plays right up the gut. He likes to run up the gut, and he's a strong runner. That's right. Well, we shall see if the uh, coaching staff is really listening to you or not, guys. But uh, that's what Sonny reflected, too, in the first half. Go with the quick hitters with Napoleon and Richard Thomas. All right, we're at halftime. Third quarter just underway or just about to start, and we'll have it for you right after this. Homecoming in Seattle. Mother Nature cooperating, a little gusty, but uh, normally a beautiful day, really, here in the shores of Lake Washington. 17-3, Don Foyer, Sonny Sixkiller, Steve Fries, Dave Hoffman, and James Clifford. The fearsome fivesome bringing you the game <laughs> on Prime Sports tonight. Huskies, if they win today, if you're into these sort of statistics, you would give Washington a sure, the Huskies, its 18th straight winning season. Last sub-500 season for the Huskies. I think that was the second year, wasn't it, for Don James? They went five and six. But the Huskies now just one of one of just nine Division I programs to not suffer a losing season the past 10 years. Wow. That's, you know, you're talking over 107, 107 programs. Well, I think the Beavers would have been very happy to not play that last 50 seconds of the half, go out at 10-3. I think that would have been the kind of half Gary Pettibone would have hoped for. And the kickoff by backup kicker, Brooke Knight. <laughs> Jerry Jensen has now become a fullback. He was in high school, Don. Why not? For Cascade High School. And so picking it up from the 17, a 
moves it 16 to the 33-yard line where it's going to be first and 10. Damon Ewer in the first half with a touchdown pass of 33 yards to Eric Bjornsson and has a two-touchdown pass starting the third. Keep in mind, Oregon State was down 21 against Stanford last week, and they came back. First and 10 from the 33. Hoffman right off the bat. There it is, James and Dave. The quick hitter up the middle, and you wanted it quickly as Rico Petrini leads in. Picks up two yards, but that's what they were talking about, Sonny, of trying to go with a quick hitter, as you suggested in the first half, with not only Richard, but Napoleon as well. Go with the handoff instead of the toss sweep. Well, it seems like he hits that, that hole so quick and ends up outside. It's amazing the quickness the guy has. Never stops. Number two in the nation. And averaging over 157 yards per game. Now second down and eight. Thomas, one-on-one. -on -one. First down and gets up to the 47-yard line of Washington. Nice Stopping him was Corey Hewitt. Richard's been doing that quite a bit. He's got tremendous hands, Steve. He's good back coming out of the backfield, you'll see on this play. And he's a, and he's a good runner also, as, as we've seen earlier in the first half. Nice call. I, Washington's got a very balanced offense. Uh, that slows down Oregon State real quick. It's a multiple concept offense. Multiple, what do they call it? Multiple balance concerts? Yes, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you describe it, Sonny. I'll call the game. <laughs> that was Napoleon getting into Beaver territory down to the 49-yard line. Four-yard gain. Let's look at the blocking on this. That's what you like to see is the fullback going up in the... Not really a big block, but what he did is he got in the way, and uh, that's all you need to do is shield the defender from getting the tackle. Second down and six. Ball just inside. Right at the 49 of Oregon State. Looking to throw left all the way. One pump. Does he have enough time? Finally. Oh, very fortunate that it was not an interception. Bjornsson, the intended receiver, and Mark Williams was giving chase on that ball along with Reggie Tung in on the pass itself. You want to you want to keep the ball away from number 25, Reggie Tung. Yeah. He almost comes up with the interception. Nice play. Reggie's got great range. He was a running back, came to Oregon State as a running back in the previous dig Cragthorpe era. Played every place in the secondary. Third down and six. With those three interceptions in the game. We'll remember that. Oof. Couple for touchdown. Fred Coleman, wide receiver, looking right. Now back to the left. Kaufman and broken up very nicely by number 17, Kane Rogers. The ninth leading sack man in the Pac-10. Kane just a junior and 14th in the conference in total tackles. So it's fourth down, and Kane has done the job on Mr. Napoleon Kaufman. He sure has big days against Washington every year. Growing up in Tacoma, gets fired up. <laughs> well, the adrenaline starts flowing probably about two weeks before the game. <laughs> Jeff Prince back to punt. Hurry. That was close. And a Husky bounce as Scott Greenlaw is able to bring it to rest at the 12-yard line. We saw that earlier in the year also, Don, where Jeff Prince, 47, seems to take an extra step or he strides up too far. It takes a little bit too much time to get that punt off. Little 36-yard punt. Well, that was certainly, that was not a rush by any means. That was just a spy man. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a very fast spy man either. He does a... Uh, on occasion, you're right. It seems that the delivery of the punt itself is taking a little too long. So Don Shanklin comes in at quarterback as he started this ball game. And giving to Stewart. He's stopped by Lawyer Malloy. Gets nine yards on first and ten. Well, the fullback's been good to Oregon State so far today. They're almost at their uh, season average in the 70s with this run. Now, look at the blocks there. Look at right there. They're downfield 15, they 10 to 15 yards. They really work hard. Usually win the fourth quarter. Second down and one as Stewart already has his single game average of 41. He's up to 42 now and gets the first down. J.D. Stewart, the ball carrier. 
Tim Lambright talking about going against the option. He says, first, you put on your shin guards <laughs> because of the cut block. And then get upfield just as fast as you can to eliminate those three options and make the quarterback's decision as difficult as possible. Well, that guy took a lot of shots at his knees and ankles when he was playing. And he knows what it's all about. <laughs> did you play against him? No, I did not. He was not. ahead of you, wasn't he? A couple of years. Yeah. We played against these dogs, and they were always tougher than them. There's the movement on Oregon State's part. And that there's your there's your typical block as you see it isolated by Starling Latu is that it's low. It's on your hand, your hands it, and it, knees. It's, it's like a crab ball. False start on the offense. First and 15. As opposed to a typical firing out they're, they're down as low. And you got to get your shoulder pads down there to beat them if you're a defensive lineman. It's tough. It used to be, you know, they used to punish you when I was in school by making you go through drills like that. That's right. This is Oregon State system. And you know, these guys are huge. I don't know how they, they can do it at those sizes. You see about 600 pounds right there in those two guys. Biggest line in the Pac-10, I believe. Now. Yeah. So it's first and 15. Again, it's the up man, Stewart again. Great leverage that time. Number 91, Steve Hoffman did a tremendous job on that play. And he needs to do that, I think, Steve. He has to disrupt that inside line play from the center and the guard and right and left. That opens it up for Deke Devers and Incaliaga to make the tackle. Oregon State system likes to build from the center out. Huge center, huge guards. They protect what they call the crease, which is between the center and the guards. That's where the fullback's got to be protected with the ball in his belly. Get somebody who can jam it up, it changes the offense. Second down and 13. Going to pass. And they go to Douglas. And it is complete, but short of the first. Russell Hairston defending as Douglas comes up with the reception. It is his sixth of the entire year. We take a look at this. This is the system. This running in place with a head bobbing is designed by Oregon State's coaches it's to hold the free safety, to keep him running through the alley to, to play option. It's very difficult for the quarterback because he's only got an instant and then he's got to throw the ball or he's in trouble. Third down and four. They picked up nine on the last play. Shanklin still with it. Everybody at home <laughs> or here in the stands thinking that they had stopped the play on Stewart, but no. And it's very close to the first down for Oregon State. <laughs> Malloy on the stop. And I think they're going to measure. The chains are on the opposite side of the field. Take a look at this. This is the triple. Good wide splits there. There's the big hit. Everybody thought Aliaga <laughs> nailed him. Oops. There's Malloy now. Good spot. Now, if you were a coach right here, wow, great hit. Forced John Shanklin very deep, so it disrupted the option right there. See whether Oregon State got it. Maybe. First down, Oregon State. Now, that would have been a situation if that was fourth and six, eight inches. I will tell you. Unquestionably, Jerry Pettibone, who would have gone for it on his own 38-yard line, third quarter. For what it's worth, uh, well, Steve, you know this, Oregon State is 5-0 and oh when rushing over 400 yards. Well, they've got 60, no, check it, what is it, 66 right now? Actually, 101, I think. No, I, oh, I'm sorry, looking at the wrong side. I'm all right. 101 yards as they carry on first and 10. But that's an impressive number, but you better be undefeated when you go for over 400 <laughs> yards rushing. <laughs> you, better, you should have the ball the whole game, too. And you had the 428 against UCLA. And only 20 in the first quarter against UCLA and barely over 110 at the half. It's amazing. It, they get stronger. Yeah. Get stronger as the game goes on, typically. Well, they've got those big people up front. They should wear you down if you're a little lighter on defense. Second down and nine. Shanklin still with it, still with it. Now he's brought down Aliaga, no gain. Maybe they lost one. <laughs> Donovan Schmidt in there as well. Great job. Washington's doing stringing this option out. They lose two. This is supposed to happen quickly. This is the double option. They leave the fullback out there. You see the great job uh, feeding Cam Reynolds, the, the running backs block that's usually a block the beavers count on it just hasn't happened today 
give uh, David Kilpatrick credit too for slowing down the quarterback. Third down and 11. Shanklin, the pitch. Look out. Boy, JJ was close on that one. Boy, getting he, some major damage as Lawyer Malloy who trips else? him up. <laughs> and wow. Richie Chambers. Wow, and Richie in there as well. But an eight yard gain. He seemed to have a little bit more. Uh, uh, I, I, the pitch back to the tailback, he was really into it that time. He wasn't trying to protect himself as much, and he had that pitch exactly where it needed to be. Absolutely. It was, however, only third down, so they'll have to punt. That's the first time where I've seen Oregon State almost come up with the leverage on the outside to really bust something big. Spiral driving punt to Leon Neal mishandled the ball. Let's see where they put him down at the two yard line. Leon's having a tough day today. Maybe it's the wind. I don't know but he struggled. Well, you can see the flag going right to left on your screen. I can see the flag. Viewers can't see it but it's really blowing hard from your right to your left. This ball really sailed on him. This is one of those you, you talk about bounces. This bounced the other direction and touched down or very close to it. Boy. We've had three lucky bounces today. Two, I think, for the Huskies now, one for the Beavers. That's a 50 yard punt, too. 54 altogether if you count the mishap after catching the ball. Well, if Napoleon can go for about 98 yards here, he'd have a pretty good afternoon. <laughs> Richard Thomas with it. Okay, Richard can go 98. Richard busts it up to the 16 yard line where he stopped by Reggie Tongue. Thirteen yard gain for Richard. Up near 50 at 46 yards I believe in the ball game. He's having a great afternoon but of course the defense is letting him happen to him. Oh, the Beavers blitz puts him in almost an old gap eight and all you got to get is a seam and when they're particularly looking outside for Napoleon he's really got an opportunity to get some yardage up the middle fullback. First and 10 from the 15. Coffin gets his shot at it. Close to five yards out beyond the 20. And he stopped by Rico Petrini. Rico out of Half Moon Bay, California. And Rogers, we have told you about out of Tacoma and Washington High School. Rico is a four year starter, good size, runs four five at that size. That's impressive at 230. Second down and five as Petrini turns his attention now with no defensive huddle turns his attention to the Huskies. Second and five with Thomas in motion. Now split wide to the right. Kaufman. And again great pursuit on the part of Oregon State. There may be a seam for a moment up front but the linebacker is doing an awfully good job of filling in the cracks. Petrini there again. So third down and three after the two yard gain for Nip. Kaufman still trying to move up that Pac-10 career statistical chart. Fourth in the Pac-10. Behind Darren Nelson, then Marcus Allen, and on top, Charles White. Third down and three. Nope. That's some good defense by those Beavers mm -hmm. as they didn't come even close to making yardage let alone get a first down they had to get out beyond the 25. You know you mentioned the no huddle offense the Beavers use on defense. Did I say offense. Oh no. I'd, oh good. No defense. huddle whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> they no do not defense. ever huddle. Yeah. Right. They stand on the field. They all get a signal from the coaches on the sideline. And Pettibone should be very happy with his troops on that one. Jeff Prince averaging just over 38 yards per punt. Number eight in the Pac-10. Low and wobbly. And now a beaver bounce. Big time beaver bounce before Mike Reed finally catches it. Got to get some height. I don't know. They're still fighting some wind. All yeah. three of us were on the field before the game. And it was a swirling tough wind. So he was probably trying to hit it low. We certainly don't want to give the beavers too many opportunities on your own half of the field. Starting here from the 47 going in five and a half minutes to go in the third period. This is a good opportunity for them Steve Absolutely. if they can mount something. That last carry on third down was Richard Thomas first carry for minus yardage in his career. 
First and ten. Movement. <laughs> wow. Right side. Let's take a timeout here. 541, third quarter. Oregon State now penalized seven times, 45 yards. Steve Priest. I'm Don Foyer with Sunny Six Killer. 541 remaining in the third quarter. First and 15 now for Oregon State. They are on their own 48 yard line. Fullback and not much there. Got Stewart carrying. The seven penalties so far 45 yards already above their season average but I believe only one of those uh, is other than some kind of a procedure and offside so six times the Beavers have misfired on the offense cost themselves five yards cost themselves their offense remember the defensive front now the front seven of the Huskies are moving around but also when they're moving around they're not doing it quietly occasionally they'll say <laughs> uh, 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 you know some odd noises which will get the offense jumping you mean like hey, yeah hey. well I didn't <laughs> maybe <laughs> Second down at 14. Look for the pass. Cameron Reynolds. Are they calling it complete? It's right at the first down marker. Yes, they are. Tremendous catch by Cam Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Lamar Lyons defending That's for Reynolds. That's his eighth reception. He's really the leading receiver on this team, Steve. Take a look at the throw. It's a long throw. Puts it right where he needs to. It didn't look pretty, but he stuck it where he had to stick it. You know, Steve, maybe we've got a better view, but if, if I'm a safety and I see that guy running in place like that, it's making me think he's going to pass. I mean, that's the first thing I saw when I saw him running in place. Maybe well, you can't see that as well when you're on the field. Coaches contend that that's the situation. Uh, I played free safety, and I, I think that that's something you can read. And a great run and good execution for J.D. Stewart as Lawyer Malloy and Lamar Lyons have to stop the fullback, but he got a first down to the 25 as they near the red zone, guys. David Ritchie, 97 for the Huskies, had him, but he only had, again, he only had him by an arm. You may be able to see it right here. Well, actually, yeah, there was David Ritchie that came off the block to get an arm on him, but you can't tackle, <laughs> tackle well, yeah. that man like that. Not with two blockers on you like that either. First and 10. And again, it's the fullback. I think that's Cedric this time. It, uh, no, it isn't. It's JD still. JD. All right. Justin Thomas in there, getting some time. Also, John Fiala at linebacker. JD Stewart's playing with a contusion in his right leg. Been playing that way for four or five weeks, and has had some downtime just because of the pounding he's taken. But he's on every special team, or just about every team. Tough cookie. A lot of yards today, too. Second down and five. Right at the 20. Stewart again as he picks up about three yards to the 17 yard line. David Ritchie meets him. Clock down to 323 here in the third quarter as Oregon State's putting something serious together here. They are now in the red zone again. You know, we talk about the, the little dance that the quarterback does throwing the ball at the Beavers. Oregon State's offensive folks have spent considerable time trying to watch that themselves in the free safety position to see if it does any good. Third down and two. Shanklin could score, will. Touchdown, Oregon State. Well devised and executed play. My goodness. This is the midline option. He doesn't get out to his option key. Fullback's dead over center instead of over guard. He takes one step and actually cuts up before the guy's there to make him option the football. Really worked. They scored on it two or three times. Got a lot of yardage out of it so far. And it relieves a lot of the pressure, Sonny, from the, from, relieves a lot of pressure from the uh, signal caller's position just reading that option. Randy Lunn out to kick the extra point, which will move Oregon State within a touchdown. And we got ourselves a ball game with 2.56 remaining in the third quarter. 17-10 Washington 
as Don Shanklin scores for his first touchdown. Check it. Fifth touchdown, and we'll be back. Two fifty six remaining here in the third quarter as Washington's lead is evaporated down to a seven point distance seventeen to ten the scoring overall in this ball game started out with a couple of field goals for Oregon State as you see with a 30 yarder for Randy Lund making him a perfect five of five for the year and then John Wales came in and came up with a 43 yard field goal making him now. 13 of 20 this season. A touchdown following a drive by the Huskies for Damon Hewitt on a keeper, and then the 33 yard touchdown pass to Eric Bjornson. Finally, the run by Don Shanklin. They don't call him Donnie anymore after the performances he's put together. Kaufman will take it into the end zone and leave it there. Uh, the ensuing kickoff as Number 14, Brooke Knight was the man with the kickoff. Down to the sideline. Guys? That was a tremendous drive by Oregon State, but it all goes back to the kicking game. The Huskies are not executing their kicking game. We have a fumbled punt. The other punt brought it back on the two-yard line. Dave? That's right. If Oregon State can keep it close, they're going to have a chance late in the game. The, the, the offense they have is not one that can come back from a big deficit, but if they can keep it close, these guys got a chance. They're doing what a wishbone offense needs to do, keep the score close. If they get way behind, they have no means to catch up. Back up to you guys. 2.56 to go here in the third quarter, and they're by no means very far away. Kaufman with the ball. Gets maybe four yards up to the 24-yard line where a host of Beavers were there waiting for him, along with Petrini as the lead man. He's averaging almost 11 tackles a game. See Rico right there, third in the Pac-10. Boy, a lot Napoleon's of white doing, shirts. <laughs> yeah, Napoleon's doing a lot of dancing around back there. I've noticed that the last couple games. Uh, it'd be nice if he can just stuff it up there and gain what he can get. Second down and six. Looking to throw. He's got Bjornsson first down up to the 37 yard line. That's a play we haven't seen a lot this season. Uh, you watch any film of the Huskies, they do not throw a lot of those in routes or the hooks on the inside corner. William Heffern, along with Rico Petrini, on the tackle of the senior. You know, if, you play, if you're playing a team that's playing a lot of man, you should be able to make a lot of different routes uh, on them, you know, fake the outcome in. That was a great hook route there by Eric Bjornsson. But, you know, Steve. Man-to-man -man defense, you know, if you have the ability that you got a big target like Eric 6'5", I throw him the outs and the ends and the hooks all day. All day. First and ten, Rogers shows blitz. Kaufman trying to get outside and cannot. As the Beavers wrestle him down. Kepke, one of the first there. And a gain of only one yard. David. I think you're absolutely right on, on the size of the people as we take a look at this replay. The run here. Justin Armour at Stanford really hurt the Beavers last week with his size. Bjornsson's exactly the same type of player. Stanford would throw the post, the post, the in, and then finally come off it with the, the corner flag route. And again, the no huddle defense with the Beavers. Everybody standing out looking to the sidelines for the signals. Second down and nine for the Huskies. Coffin and got tripped up somehow. Is that his own man or was it? The beaver back there. Again, I think that's attributed to his dancing around a little bit back there instead of just firing through the hole. Make some deep, yeah. Let's see. Uh, tripped over Patrick Kessie's leg as opposed to Ina getting on him. A lot of white shirts. Now, the pursuit by Oregon State is outstanding. Yeah. Their team speed has really improved dramatically. Third down and ten for the Huskies. Dogs are struggling here in the second half. Hoffman to get him open. Can he get the first? No. Gets up to the 45-yard line. So it'll be fourth and short. 
And Kane Rogers, the man who got him out of bounds. Here's the scrum formation coming in. <laughs> the scrum. Here's a play to the left. Uh, again, Eric Brunson was double teamed up on the outside and he had to dump it off to Napoleon Kaufman. Not a bad guy to dump it off to, but you really, I thought maybe he might die for the first down. Beavers zoned it up that time. You don't see that a lot. But, no, you uh, don't. Jeff Prince, who ran for a first down, he got a hurry, young man. Boy, he got the punt away. A high spiral, too. I can't believe the Oregon State Beaver didn't just swat at oh, the ball. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my gosh. Is that Holmes? No, that was Takiina. Takiina, I believe. Is it Ina? Take a look at this. Oh, I, think, I think it's Holmes, number 53. Yeah, 53. Get those arms out there, my friend. You're going to have a block cut. That is Ina. You're right. Wow. Gonna have to teach him to lay out. Lay out. <laughs> Man, you've got yourselves a turnover, a major play. You know, the big plays decide these games, and it's things like that that have happened to Beavers all year where they just didn't quite make it. First and ten from the 21 yard line. Right hash mark and the fullback. This time it is Thomas, and Cedric gets good first down yardage to. Well, they'll call it five yards to the 26-yard line met by Kilpatrick. Third quarter coming down to a conclusion. That'll be it, in fact, for this, the third quarter. And the fourth one's going to be real interesting. <laughs> a seven-point lead for the 15th-ranked team in the country, Washington, as Jim Lambright's team leads 17-10. to Third quarter is over. We'll be back. the fourth quarter where Jerry Pettibone's team takes great pride in its fourth quarter conditioning right Steve Brees? absolutely if, if you were here in the stadium you see the Beaver players making the four sign with their hands just as the third quarter ends they believe this is their quarter they believe this is where they take it over they've done a very good job the last couple of years second down and five for Oregon State after the first carry by Thomas the fullback ball on the 26 yard line as we start the final quarter Thomas carries short yardage to the 27-yard line. David Ritchie, one of the first in there for the Huskies against Thomas. And you're scoring throughout the day so far. The 17 points all coming in the second quarter for Washington. Second quarter, Oregon State has just soon forget, Absolutely. and they and they have, <laughs> especially the last minute. Third down and four. Need to get to the 31-yard line. Thomas is stopped right there. Shanklin's mad at himself. I wonder if yeah, he read he, that wrong, Steve. He, he tried to. You can see Shanklin did not misread it. Fullback reached over and took the ball. Don was trying to pull it out late. He read it right. Fullback had already taken it. Take a look here. You'll see Don puts it in. It's far, he gets far side. Don's trying to pull it out, but the fullback's got it. And he has to make a decision. He has to let go because you don't want to fumble with this, the ball down this part Absolutely. of the wood. Absolutely. Now, that's the point I was trying to make, guys, before the game is that the fullback has the option to keep it, right? No, well, it's not supposed to be oh. his option. <laughs> <laughs> but on well, that particular play, you were correct. I'm <laughs> stuck. <laughs> wow. Stuck his Short punt. Kick. And a Husky bounce right back into Beaver territory to the 48-yard line. And I don't believe Leon Neal was back there for that punt. 21-yard punt as Don Shanklin will sit down and talk. He's going, Coach, I tried to pull it out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's it. If I had a handle, I'd have gotten it. Well, you could see he put the ball clear to the opposite side of the fullback and couldn't get it around his body again. So the Huskies with a great opportunity here and good field position leading 17 to 10 13 34 left in the ball game first and 10 on the Beaver 48 Richard Thomas gets down to the 41 yard line met by Kane Rogers the inside linebacker Huskies had a lot of respect for Rogers and Petrini coming into this game. 
Great job here, Richard Thomas. You're right. You know, their defense of Oregon State, Kane Rogers there. Steve, you've been all you've been seeing them the whole season, and I'm sure they've been making plays like that. Well, these backers are real tough kids. 51 yards now on 10 carries for Thomas. This time short yardage and short of the first down. You know, you mentioned tendencies early in the game. I, right. I have here what Oregon State has tracked. Washington's tendencies. I was expecting Washington to run the ball 75, 80 percent of the time on first down. Found out it was 60, 40. Really surprised me with a Napoleon Kaufman. They were set their 70, 30 either run or pass almost down the line. If it's more than seven, it's 70 percent pass. If it's less, it's 70 percent run. Third down and three. Big play for the Dogs to try to hold on to the ball. Keep Don Shanklin off the field. Checking off at of the line. Play clock down the one at the snap. Yardson, complete first down at the 30-yard line of Oregon State. Got away from William Ephraim, number 18. Nice throw. You're right, though, Sonny. He keeps going back to Eric, doesn't he? Yeah, he's uh, well, he's been his number one man so far right. this season. You can see why here. Did you watch Eric stick those big paws up there? He does a great job of concentrating and, and catching the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. Should have seen the show that Bjornsson put on against Craig Newsom of Arizona State, Steve. It was something else. And Newsom, one of the best cornerbacks around. First and 10 from the 30. Going for everything. Bjornsson, touchdown! Oh, what a play to the senior, but we got a flag down in the backfield. Let's go back and see what it's all about. Nothing but holding when it's holding. down there in the middle. You got that right. Bring it back, dogs. This is what's been going on the last two games, Sonny. Now that, it, you're absolutely right. Whoa, big call. And the hold called by Bill Richardson, the referee. See if you can find it in the line. Now, tough from this angle. Well, they're sending people like they have been most of the day. I, well, there's a little bit of a jersey right there, but the guy that threw the flag was from behind. I'm not sure he could see that one. Still an excellent throw what and a, a great shot. route by Eric Bjornsson. What a shot. That's the difference. Those last two patterns, the size difference with Bjornsson, huge factor. William's not been that far off of him. First down and 26. They're going to get clear down to the 20 yard line. Perfect. Setting up the screen, but overthrows Kaufman. Oh, boy, was that set up? It certainly was. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was a <laughs> bus going into the end. Trevor, <laughs> Trevor Highfield and Frank Garcia were all the way down to the Beaver 30. Wow. There were three, four. I don't know how they got that many people over there. Set up really beautifully. Lyman did a good job letting the defenders pursue. Wow. Get up, field. Oh. oh, that's like it. <laughs> It's like a tidal wave coming out to a purple rain horizontally with those three gentlemen in front. Second and 26. Janowski wide to the left against Mark Williams. Hoffman. Oh, my. Huskies are really fighting it now, aren't they, son? I think they're fighting it a little. Well, Trying a little too hard. You know, just like I've talked about in the past, and, and uh, one thing you want to do is Get passes in there that are good passes to throw. I wouldn't mind going back to the wideouts if they're going to be playing man-to-man. -man. Ephraim doesn't seem to be able to contain Eric Jorgensen today. Hey, throw him hey, three hook routes and you're near, you're near a first down. That was a difficult catch to make because his, his speed was coming to the near side and the pass, and he just couldn't get his body turned around in time. Third down and 26. Now Janowski and Bjornsson come out both to the left side. Janowski in the slot draw to Kaufman nothing doing defenses have really studied and done a great job of trying to hold Kaufman down as the Bluebirds come out a little and Huskies will have to punt Monty Johnson a young man that transferred over from the University of Idaho just got his eligibility about three games ago really adds to Oregon State's pass rush and in on the tackle that time so Jeff Prince back to boot again Coming into this game, he had six inside the 20-yard line and three inside the opposing team's 10. Got a chance to do some here. No, wobbly punt off the side of his foot. 
Gets a good bounce, fortunately, and rolls inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Talk right. about struggling today. Boy. Fortunately for the Huskies, they get a roll and pin Don Shanklin and the Beavers back inside their own 20. Well, you can see the Beavers on the sideline, how it's picking up. They're all up close to the sideline. That's right. Moving around. They're not sitting on the bench. Jerry Pettibone has done some amazing things where he's taken this program. Talent-wise and discipline-wise, attitude, you're right, son. Beavers are in this one. Down only seven. First and ten from the 17-yard line. Thomas, the fullback, and he is stopped there. David Ritchie, one of the first there, along with Ink Galliaga. Ouch. Yes. <laughs> Met him immediately. <laughs> Fullbacks have gotten some yards today, but boy, if they paid for him some other time. <laughs> Look at this shot. Ooh. Ow. Cedric Thomas will remember this one. <laughs> He's coming off the sidelines and nailed pretty good. It's J.D. Stewart <laughs> back in. Second down and ten. Ten and a half minutes to go in the game. Here it comes. Shanklin steals. Got the seam. Can cut outside. He does. First down. Knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Don Shanklin is one dangerous quarterback. Richie Chambers finally gets him out of bounds. As this play developed, Steve, I thought we had tremendous defense on this play. But as you can see, great block, the one you mentioned about yep. earlier that they have absolutely have to make. They've got to make it with that on half back. Now look at Stewart. He led. He's the fullback. He led that play as it was the double option, and he's still downfield 15 yards. David Ritchie injured his knee, and Jason Chork has come in at the, in effect, the left defensive end position. This near side. Stewart and gets it up beyond the 35 to the 37 yard line met by Aliaga. Well defense that's the midline triple option again the Shanklin I believe kept it and just turned it upfield. Watch Don Shanklin here he doesn't slide tackle. <laughs> Look at that. Tough cookie. It's like who can get it who can get lower. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and eight. There's the pitch. And J.J. Young, who is not afraid to try to run into people, meets Reggie Reeser at the sideline. Actually, I would have liked to have seen J.J. use a little shake and bake right there. He had a chance to break that all the way, and I, J.J. has gotten to, so he'll take anybody on. And here it looks like he's got an opportunity, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Cam Reynolds, number 30, has already thrown a block downfield right there to key him. Yeah, I think he wanted the contact there, but you're right. If he'd have maybe broken it inside for more yardage. 31 yards for J.J., third and short. Stewart gets the first down, and the Beavers continue to move the sticks. Remember, this started back on their own 17. Steve Hoffman with the tackle on the fullback. Well, I can tell you where Jerry Pettibone's head is right now. They're moving down the field. They still got 54 yards to go, and Jerry's already got his two-point conversion call. Guaranteed. First and 10 from the 46 of Oregon State. Pettibone looking for his third victory of the year. Flag. And the whistle before the snap. Which usually means motion on Oregon State. Gotta be. So back at a five. So it'll be first and 15 from the 41 yard line of the Beavers. Oregon State has a nifty little bootleg pass. They've got a bootleg off of their cross buck, but they haven't run the cross enough today to make any difference. Anybody. <laughs> Jerry, who says there's no timetable as far as turning the program around to stick with his philosophy. And he's in this one with first and 15. Stewart gets five, so it'll be second down at 10. Gets up to the 45 where Justin Thomas was in on the tackle. Justin getting a little more playing time. The backup to Deke Devers. Actually, they call it 11 yards as the clock continues to 
Count down to eight and a half minutes. The wide receiver is to the left side. Speed. Lawyer Malloy meets him. Came Boy. from nowhere. Short gain. I call it four yards up to the 48, 49 yard line. So it will be third down and eight is what they call it. Well, there's nobody blocking Lawyer Malloy. They, they just can't account for him. You're a great free safety against Oregon State. And Oregon State doesn't catch you with a pass along the way. You're going to have a big day. Look at this effort. Nice play by Malloy. Lambright said he could have a career day in tackles today. Stewart, very close. I think he's got the first down. Had to get inside the 45, and that's right where he is, and met by Richie Chambers along with Malloy. Interesting call right there. Oregon State quick counted it. First down. Caught the Huskies before the shift. Nice call. Oregon State, first and 10 on the 44 of Washington. 740 remaining in the game. <laughs> Husky fans are starting to get a little nervous. They're getting <laughs> real nervous. Stewart again setting it up. Down to the 43 yard line. Jerry Jensen extended playing time with the hit at linebacker. You know, coming in the ball game, the Huskies wanted to try and get as many sticks on Mr. Shanklin as they could, but really today they have not really stuck in that much. David Ritchie comes back into the ball game, by the way, so the knee must not be too bad. They've cut his yardage pretty good, but, but really he's done a pretty good job of running with two or three exceptions. Second and eight. Stewart again. The toughest thing about that fullback dive is seeing whether or not he's got the ball when you're a linebacker or a defensive tackle, just reading it. Devers and Steve Hoffman, the nose tackle and defensive end with the stop. It is so difficult, discipline-wise, to play this offense as a defensive linebacker, safety. You just have to tackle your guy every time. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. But don't you think consistently, you mean, I mean, for the whole four quarters? Absolutely. One mistake and it's a touchdown. That's You're right. right. They're down and six from the 40-yard line. Shanklin still has it. Even the crowd thinks he's still brought down. But first down on the part of J.J. Young, who flies over the extra yard needed. I get a kick out of the crowd. They think there's been a stop. <laughs> Look at that stick. They thought wow. they had him there. Did, no. you, did you see Cameron Reynolds coming in from his halfback position to get the great block? to free it up. But I think Ink Aliaga also was fooled on that play. It looked to me like he was watching the fullback getting stuck and forgetting about what he was supposed to do. 6-17 remaining. First and 10. Shanklin's got a seam. Lawyer Malloy comes up again and allows maybe a yard, maybe two. Timeout here at Husky Stadium. Be right back here in the fourth quarter. remaining here in the fourth quarter 17 10 but Oregon State has mounted a terrific drive which started back on their own 17 they trail by seven it's second down and eight fumble let's find out the wrestling match now begins on the 30 they're saying Husky ball yes Good eyes, Sonny. I saw that pop right on out. Looked like the handoff went all the way through the bread basket there. Might get a good look at it here, Steve. Let's take a look, see? Looks like he, he tried to bring it back. We tried, tried to pull it. Up. It's so hard, and particularly if, you know, just with the different fullbacks. They, they need to use two fullbacks or more because the punishment they take at each fullback is a little bit different. Each quarterback's a little bit different. They're, they're talking to him right there. J.D., buddy, you got to let it go. He's going to pull it out. This is one thing that Jerry had talked about this week is that we're, we're playing competitively in every game. 
but we're not making the plays at mm -hmm. the moment to win big games yet. That's exactly what's happened. In fact, they've had many opportunities. They, they could as easily be five and two as two and five had they made one or two plays a game. First and ten for Washington, and they now need to do some serious moving of the chain with five and a half minutes to go. I don't think the Husky offense can afford to just sit here and just, you know, give it to Richard Thomas. You know, I think you still have to think offensively with five mm -hmm. minutes to go. That was Richard Thomas you saw carrying and stopped by Rico Petrini. So it'll be second down and eight after the two yard gain and we are down to the five minute mark and Jim Lambright no longer donning the cap. We have seen throughout this season. Jornson is wide to the left side. With two tight ends and they will wait for the play clock to get down. It's under five now. Kaufman. Not a bad play as it gets up to the 38 yard line. Timeout has been called on the field by Oregon State. Four and a half minutes to go here in the fourth. And we'll be right back. Four and a half minutes to go. Quickly down to the sidelines. Guys? Yeah, here we are with Mike Evelico. He's got a bad elbow and he's out this week. He's been playing fantastic all year. Mike, what's the problem with Jumbo and when will you be back? I'll probably be back by a Monday or Tuesday. I got a slight staph infection in, in my left elbow and it's, you know, we got antibiotics healing up. Mike, going against uh, the offense like this, it's making it tough. Well, what happens out there in the defense? Well, I'll tell you what, Clock, this offense is a lot like Lawrence Welk, man. It really lulls you to sleep, and, uh, and we're just trying to fight it out there, you know? That's Looks beautiful, like you did a good Mike. job. Got that turnover last time. Back up to you guys. Saw the first down by Richard Thomas. Good effort by the fullback, and they moved the chain. I was going to say, that's a big third down for the mm -hmm. Huskies with four, four and a half minutes to go. They don't make that, Steve. They've got a great opportunity, especially the way we've been kicking the ball today. No question. And that, that was the biggest play of the game so far because the Beavers can't afford to get the ball back with two minutes to go. At four minutes, they have a real opportunity to score. Muskies only two of ten on third down conversions today. Now it is first and ten. Napoleon. Crowd always anticipating, waiting <laughs> to see him bust a big one, and we haven't seen it today. You know, that third down call was a heck of a call right there. The offensive coordinator really did an excellent job of taking advantage of Oregon State the tendencies they expect. Well, that's true, and they're also going to the right guy with the hands to catch it. Going to be the shortest amount of yardage for Kaufman today, unless he busts one in a hurry. Well, the Beavers will be coming right here, so this is a chance for him to have one of those kinds of play. Second down and four with the ball on the 48-yard line. And the toss sweep led by Richard Thomas. Well, first down and down to the 32 and give him one more foot and he could have been gone. Well, Reggie Tong, very close. I better shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you called that one, Steve. <laughs> I'd be thrown out of this booth in Carvalho. Right there, he made the decision to cut back and it was the best decision he made on that play. One hand, I'm sure he'd have been able to outrun Reggie Tong. Yeah, I well, he's he got it. good speed, but not that kind. It was six if he could have stayed up. Well, the Beavers had it right where they wanted it with Michael Hale in front now. Napoleon's getting up there at least a little bit near 100 yeah, yards. 67 yards, that's what I was just checking. As Richard Thomas carries for Richard little or no gain. Not for a lack of effort by either team. <laughs> Boy, is he tough. He is. He looks like he's bouncing along a wall. So is, so is Rico Petrini. Timeout is called by Oregon State with 2.49 remaining here in the ballgame. They have one remaining. Well, you just think of that uh, last minute of, of the first half. That really struck me when it happened that the Beavers are in this game playing what they'd like to think is an excellent football game at 10-3 with the Huskies. And then a quick touchdown, momentum changer, but still the, the points were so huge right then. Oregon State rushing for 210 yards to this point. 
points. Now, you never want to give up any points just before mm -hmm. halftime, as much less a, a touchdown. Well, 210 yards isn't a, a typical day for the Beavers. I think that's the second right. low for the year. Arizona was about 185, I think. A uh, lot of lost yards, too. I, I don't have this sheet in front of me, but I think the Beavers have probably lost 30 to 40 yards pitching the ball today. Along with Steve Fries, Sonny Sixkiller, and Jim Lambright, I'm Don Foyer. Here with 249 <laughs> remaining in Husky Stadium. Coach Pettibone there thinking, him, come on defense, let's come up with a big play, give our offense a chance to run down the field. Second and nine, Huskies need to get some yardage on this player. They're going to have to go upstairs. Toss sweep. And oh. just plain old great pursuit and hard work by Oregon State. Boy, he got out of bounds. Thank you, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, Steve. He's got to learn to avoid that sidelines like the plague in a game like this. Third down and seven. So an interesting call now for the Huskies who are only what two of ten on their third down conversions today. Well, it's, what do you think, Sonny? That little quick screen if they're going to go up top or a draw? Well, I think one thing they should look at is throwing the ball to Eric Bjornsson for the first down just running out. That seemed to work mm -hmm. before it's worked the last few ball games. I'm going to the end zone with Janowski. He's got single coverage with Williams on him and he's got the whole side of the field. Like I said, let's go to Bjornsson. Touchdown! What a catch! Uh, unbelievable! Behind the head of the defender. Wow. <laughs> this is incredible. Incredible catch. Boys had one, see this. He's had one call back today. This one counts, and he did it in great fashion. An even tougher one. Now with seven touchdown receptions. Well, here we go, Don. I had the right guy, but you had the right play. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, oh behind oh, Ephraim, oh. too. There's that size difference. Yep, no, no question. Steve. No question. Boy, That's a big-time catch, catch, folks. John Wales. And it is good in Washington, collectively breathing a little more easily now with a 24-10 lead. The last time the Beavers met the Huskies up here, I believe the final was 45 to 16. That I, tells you how far the Beavers have come. I remember that day. You guys let me have it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be as nice as possible, actually. <laughs> Steve, you actually should have gone down at halftime with all those alumni down there. <laughs> said hi to a few of those boys. I'll bet there's a guy that wouldn't want to talk to or see again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could find Rick Redman in a few oh, yeah. guys for you. We have had some tough guys here. Medved, Red and Boy had some oh, linebackers yeah. about that Freddy, Freddy Forsberg. Forsberg. Red Forsberg. Fantastic Freddy. Yep. A lot of good ones. And of course, Coach Lambright has only sent 17 linebackers to the NFL. 17. What are the Beavers going to do now, Steve? I mean, they're down there. Are they going to see Shanklin maybe throw the ball a little bit on uh, first or second down? Well, they, they will, but the difficulty with this is that they, they will still probably throw out of the system that you've seen so far. The okay. quarterback, a little steps, getting back three, three paces. They'll bring the tight end across a little bit, but, you know, there's one tight end catch in four years at Oregon State, so it isn't really anything different. They get in this position, and they're just flat out in trouble until... The offense matures a little bit. Jerry's going to bring it along, get more passing into it. He had to bring up the talent level first. Incidentally, today is the first two touchdown day for Eric Bjornson. Never done it in his career. From here, Oregon State will go home and host Pacific and then host on the 19th, Washington State. And finally, November 26th, the Civil War, they host Oregon. So three straight home games. Is that correct, Steve? Yes. And the Huskies go down to Stanford next week. Fair catch again called. Anthony Murray's getting pretty good at that. He's had two of those today. That time he started his fair catch signal as soon as the ball came up in the air. <laughs> probably could have run it. Or at least it was a situation where people weren't near him that the back could have kicked it off and run with the ball. There's Eric Bjornsson telling everybody, hey, see, I just throw me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm open. I can't believe you and I missed up on that. I, we were both going for the end zone. I just picked the wrong side. Well, actually, I had the, you're right. The play and you, you had, had the play. I had the guy. That's right. 
Isn't that what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half minutes to go. Everybody's asleep right now. They're all going, you can hear the lights going quick in their bedrooms watching the end of this ball game Sunday night. <laughs> and Shanklin having to go upstairs whether he wants to or not now. Well, as you can see, the difficulty with this situation is, is nobody's going to believe that this is a run play. And he's right. now setting up two, two, three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's been looking down at the ground. He doesn't have the opportunity to read any receivers. So this is really tough on the Beavers to, to get anything out of this point in the game. Well, in a normal offense, play action at this point doesn't really do any good. None at all. That's right. Second down and ten with two and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Reynolds and they go to Thomas up the middle. As the junior from Pasadena carries and meets David Ritchie for Washington. He gets three yards up to the 31 yard line. And Jerry Pettibone will head back to Corvallis and wrap up the 94 season with three straight right there in Parker Stadium. They are friendly confines this year, too. Boy, they, yeah, and you've been getting some crowds, and that's mm -hmm. great to see. Third down and six. Trouble there as Deke Devers gets back in. Devers was tied for fifth in the Pac-10 for tackles for loss with ten coming into this contest. Well, that was uh, obviously Don Shanklin went the wrong direction right. right there. He'll get the credit, but it was a busted play. No question. Oops. Heavens. <laughs> Ouch. Dick Devers out of Garfield High School here in Seattle. And he'll be attempting to rush Doug Stuckey, the punter. I mean, what's the difference, Steve? Why not go for it? I, yeah, I, I agree either. with you totally. Want to keep the score down? I don't know. I don't believe this. Yeah, this is uh, Freddie Coleman, by the way, catching the ball on um, the punt rather than Leon Neal. Well, that, you know, you, your only thought there, I guess, is you don't want to, to blow this game out farther, but that doesn't make any difference. Uh, well, this, uh, this, you got to win and, and go for it, and I disagree with Coach on what he did there. Yeah, it's not a moral victory. Uh, you know, it's going to be a loss of the loss, and you played your hearts mm -hmm. out, but you, hey, at least if you go for it, you still got a little sure. bit of fight in you. It's so odd because the normal Jerry Pettibone position is to go for everything. And then in a situation like that, uh, waving a white flag doesn't look right. No. Jim Lambright sending in the second unit on offense. As Ted Stark will be at quarterback. And Leon Neal is at tailback. Giving to Mike Reed. Mike Reed, who has six yards all year. And Ted Stark getting a chance to he's, uh, play a little. He's only had one pass attempt this year and did not complete it. He came very close to coming into that Oregon game last week on two occasions and had it not been the major protest by Heward to start the second half and later on we would have seen Ted start going to play for the Huskies. I know he probably wanted to get a lot of family up from Medford Oregon right. I'm sure, and uh, I thought he would go in uh, as well. This could be the last play of the game. Second down and eight 35 seconds left. As again, it's the fullback read. And that should do it. As Oregon State will head back home, and Jim Lambright has the Huskies back on the winning track. Jim Lambright will go 13 and 6 in his career now as the Husky head man. 12 seconds. Evidently, the timeout was called. Oh, I don't know. The clock now starts again. <laughs> Explain well, that one to me, guys. Another, as Sonny said, moral victory for the Beavers. <laughs> <laughs> they, get, they don't go a long ways this late in the season. Evidently. So, Washington comes up with a victory, 24 to 10, coming off that last pass for the touchdown to Eric Bjornsson, which iced it for the Huskies, getting the victory here at home. Washington continues to be undefeated here at Husky Stadium this year. And we'll now go down to Stanford for next weekend, then come home and host California. And then Lambright will take his crew over to Pullman to take on those fighting Cougs at Washington State and the best defense in the nation. Let's go down now to Dave Hoffman and James Clifford, who is with Eric Bjornson, his first ever two touchdown day. 
Congratulations, Eric. Big day for you, big season for you. How's it feel? Feels good. I mean, uh, a lot of people probably think we played a little bit flat today, but Oregon State's a damn good football team, and uh, you know they really made some big plays and stopped us when they needed to, and, and so this is a big time win. Hey, Eric, we're standing right here, and you're like six inches taller than both of us. <laughs> is your height that much of an advantage out there on the field? Uh, it can be sometimes. You know, when the, that last touchdown, Damon put it, yeah. you know, right where it had to be, and. Uh, Either I was catching that or nobody was. So it's That's times right. like that where it, it comes in handy. We well, did a great job. Just keep it up. Keep playing hard, bro. The yeah, main thing is a win's a win, huh? That's exactly right. <laughs> Back to you. Okay. By the way, William Ephraim, the man he had to reach over for the touchdown, is at five foot ten, 160 pounds, against the six five, 215 pound Eric Bjornson. Well, we also Eric Bjornson has done that against some of the best DBs in the league this year. But again, Steve. Big turnover when they didn't need to have it, and uh, Huskies got penalized on a touchdown play. Give the Beavers an opportunity. They're in position to get some points and a big turnover. Well, that's several weeks this season that the Beavers have had an opportunity and come down to one turnover, one bad play, and that was it. Again, the Beavers come up short with an opportunity. Okay, 24-10. We'll be right back. Couple of other notes to cover as you see the final score. Napoleon Kaufman, 21 carries, only 69 yards today, his uh, lowest output of the year. And I think that's going to basically take care of uh, him being a, a serious contender for the Heisman. I think you're right, Don, but uh, credit Oregon State. They played a tremendous job today uh, defensively. Offensively, they, they did as well. They just had the penalties and a mm -hmm. miscue. And knowing Napoleon Kaufman, he'd rather take the W any day. I'm sure he would. <laughs> Steve, final comment. Absolute best job the Beavers have seen this year of playing their option. Hmm. Great job by the linebackers and secondary on this team. Defensive line, I, I, it surprises me that they stopped him with 200 plus yards as opposed to 300. Interesting. Good job. Steve Freeze, thanks for joining us. It's always great to Welcome. see you again. Yes, Sonny Six Killer, thanks. And of course, to James Clifford and Dave Hoffman down on the field. Thank you, gentlemen. Once again, the final. Washington winning it 24 to 10 over Oregon State. For Steve Priest, Sonny Sixkiller, I'm Don Foyer. Thanks, and good night, everybody.